Good evening and welcome to the August 5th meeting of the Hampton Board of Selectmen. Please stand and salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to uh, introduce the board. To my far left, Selectman Mike Pierce. To my immediate left, Selectman Phil Bean. To my far right, Selectman Mike Pluff. To his left, Selectman Mary Louise Woolsey. And to my immediate right, Town Manager Fred Welch. First item on the agenda tonight is the public comment period. Anybody from the public wish to comment? Man in the shorts. <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> I've never seen Arthur in shorts. Well, look <laughs> what you've been missing. Art Moody 3 Thompson Road. <coughs> I, uh, the last, at least three times you've dis been discussing boulders at <coughs> Northside Park, <coughs> which uh, was uh, dedicated in memory of Joseph Ballard Brown, Joe Billy Brown who lived nearby on town lease land in the early part of the 20th century and was a longtime selectman. And it was dedicated with a boulder back 49 years ago. And I'm wondering if that boulder is now... Oh, in, in the wall? <laughs> in the wall. <laughs> Anybody know? Uh, sort, of a, sort of a squarish <laughs> boulder, but it wasn't unmarked. Un <coughs> like two others that were dedicated the year before at Old Home Day by the Historical Society. <coughs> was the boulder marked in any way? No, that was a <laughs> that, that was a fallacy. Do you, of the whole do you know if it was to the? It was north on the ancient highway side. Over towards the parking lot somewhere, shouldn't it? Yeah. Well, the parking lot wasn't what really was made a parking yeah. lot until the 70s, right? 1970s, graded. <coughs> But uh, if you run into it, <laughs> hope I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur is uh, Joseph B. Brown. Joseph the, uh, Brown. Yeah. Two others. The two other. That was to be dedicated uh, 50 years ago, to 325th uh -huh. anniversary <coughs> on Old Home Day that the Historical Society ran. But the selectmen stopped them because there was no authority at town meeting for the Joseph Ballard Brown. Oh. So an article was passed March 1964. <coughs> and then Old Home Day was in August 1964. Uh, another one that was uh, dedicated 50 years ago was uh, the Goody Cole Stone, which is, is distinctive in shape and in markings. And the closing ceremony for the 375th Carnival <coughs> next Sunday, 4 o'clock. The uh, Historical Society is going to mark that one. That, was, that wasn't marked, too, by putting something in the ground in front of it. And while the legend of Goody Cole is playing in the background, uh, I guess it's going to be uncovered by the guy that wrote that song. Robert McClung. Uh, this is the weekend of uh, the 375th, although I'm not publicity. Uh, the recent flyer they put out today doesn't mention anything about selling memorabilia. So, <coughs> uh, Mr. Bean has one of our hats, and uh, it's it's appropriately a, a black one since we have the cemetery trustees here tonight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, there'll be a tent, I guess, uh, although who knows where it's going to be placed. Uh, it'll be also the information tent for the commission. And we'll have all things to sell. Be open at least, at least the early afternoon of Saturday and at least the early afternoon on Sunday if we have anything left to sell. Uh, whether it will be open Sunday morning I can't tell you. But uh, things starts off Friday night and uh, official opening is 
Saturday morning ceremony at 11 a.m. featuring Governor Hassan and Chairman Nichols. That's quite a combination. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know about that? Oh. And uh, I guess the uh, food and the crafts will already be opened by t at 10 o'clock Saturday. It's, uh, it's a carnival something for everybody. And uh, I guess I guess the other three members of the commission had a little ceremony at Founders Park today with U.S. Senator Shaheen, but I didn't know anything about it, so I can't tell you what happened. Thank you, Arthur. Anybody else from the public? Okay, seeing none. I have a now, the uh, impetus for this subject to be looked into in the first place was the thought of adding uh, Tide Mill Road to the right. yep. mix of uh, specifically providing no through trucking. And so I, uh, when the code was first looked at uh, back earlier this year, a motion was made and passed to add a new section 805.57 to the code uh, for that very purpose and to add Tide Mill Road on top of a general prohibition on trucking on public ways. Uh, subsequently, we discovered that in the transition from the older town ordinance format to the new, uh, in fact, no through trucking had already been transported it into it, yeah. added on to weight limits. Yeah. Yeah. And so we essentially had a duplicate. And so uh, the charge here, the idea here was to eliminate duplication, but also to make sure that no through trucking was put in a place of its own. And so Fred and I had discussed that concept, and actually to leave weight limits alone for the moment. Uh, we discussed that concept briefly last week when I was away on vacation, and uh, Fred drafted up something, and I looked at that today and felt that another something might accomplish that even better. And so Fred and I discussed that, and I, you have something in your boxes today that uh, says at the top from Council 8513, uh, which is to basically break off the no through trucking from where it now sits in Section 769 of the code uh, under weight limits, and to put that in its own new Section uh, 769A1. Um, as far as singling out Tide Mill Road for no through trucking, the thought was that this actually doesn't need a section all of its own because uh, it's already covered by the general proscription of through trucking on public ways throughout the town so mm -hmm. that it doesn't already need its own special protection. Um, the third thought was that the violations and penalties should be updated so that we aren't stuck in a uh, hundred dollars for a um, a current offense for uh, a single offense. Nevertheless, would have a uh, graduated mm -hmm. um, yeah. fine of a hundred for the first offense, two fifty for the second, and five hundred for the third in each subsequent offense. And so those are the thoughts behind the motion that you've got here presented. And if it's too much to swallow all at once, <laughs> obviously it can be put off for yet another week. But um, would somebody like to make a motion? I will I make. There. I will make that motion. I will. <laughs> I will move. You have the update of one, Mary Louise. Yes. Yeah. I have a question on it. I will move uh, to amend sections uh, uh, ordinance. 769 section 7a and b by making the following changes sections 769 a and b shall be removed from 769-7 and placed under the heading 769-a-1 no through trucking and then adding a new 769-a-2 as follows and uh, it contains the violations and penalties any person violating any of the provisions of 769A1 shall be liable to a penalty of not more than $100 for the first offense, 250 for the second offense, and 500 for the third and each subsequent offense. If any section or part of a par or part of a section or paragraph of this article is declared invalid or unconstitutional, 
it shall not be held to invalidate or impair the validity, force, or effect of any other section or sections or part of the section or paragraph of this article. I love your crappies. Number three, repeal Chapter 805, Article 9, Subsection 57, Tide Mill Road, No Through Trucking Provision, as same as now covered under 769A-1A. I have a second little time. bone to pick with this. I, I, I get what you're saying, and if I go over to what is the third, uh, fourth page in sequence, this back page. Sure, okay. that's what's there now. It says um, Route 1A, Ashworth Avenue, and Ocean Boulevard. Basically, I assume that prior to this, it says somewhere, um, yeah, uh, the vehicle is being operated on the following named streets or highways. It should say ex it should say the same thing that it says in the Tide Mill Road 805, which is Exeter Road, High Street, Landing Road, U.S. Route 1, Lafayette Road, State Route, Route 1A, Ashworth Avenue, and Ocean Boulevard, Toll Farm Road from Exeter Road to Merrill Industrial Drive and Winnicunnet Road. I don't think it's sufficient to have just those three. Oh yes, yeah. actually, those are uh, A, B, C, D, and then E, F, G. Where is A, B, C, D? Um, I think I may have reversed the pages on you. Oh, I just didn't see. And further, oh, yeah. to to move just a Sorry little about bit that. further on this. Yeah, those um, are an exception, by the way, under number four to the. Uh, I don't have number. The prohibition. I don't have number four. So uh, just so long as we're clear on that, and number w and one more, mm -hmm. uh, when it says Toll Farm Road from Exeter Road to Merrill Industrial Drive, um, you've got trucks coming off I-95 under the Exeter Road. Yeah, you can't stop the trucks from coming off I-95 at Exit Two, so you're going to have to. Uh, okay, okay, so that will be taken in by the Exeter Road part of you the. Would, you would think, right. yeah, yeah, right. which is not being. We're not on. We're not changing any of that. Okay, I just want to make sure those those streets that you're not going to get penalized on. They remain the same. Are stipulated, right, in the new replacement that gets rid of the Toll Farm Road 805. Actually, Engine actually, is to take uh, it in uh, one lump and yeah. transport Actually, it if you want to uh, channel. The trucking uh, off of Tide Mill Road and put it onto Hard Arts Way. Mm. Well, you want? You mean you want? I didn't know if. Try that again. <laughs> okay. The idea was to have no through trucking on Tide Mill Road. Right. Mm -hmm. And instead to channel it onto Hard Arts Way. That's what's That's been correct. done now. Right. So perhaps that is the exception. That is an exception that ought to be added to number four. Oh, the As an exception. Way. Oh, okay. Hard Arts Way is the exception, exception because you won't be penalized if you get caught with your truck on there. Right. Yes. That's why we brought you here. Right. Good. That's you why you raised the point. Well, we worked that out. Well, that's way is I know. Is it posted? So it'll be subsection H. I know. We've got to get the public works. Yeah. Okay. Does, right. does somebody want to um, move to make an amendment to Mary Louise's motion consistent with Mark's suggestion? Basically adding and that's to fine. 4 H. Are you making that motion, Mary Louise? I'll move to amend. Okay. And I'm not sure that we had a second on the original I motion. I did. He did. Oh, okay. Well, so do you want to second the amendment? I can do that, yeah. Okay. And that with the understanding that the roads, as stipulated in 805, that are not penalized when you're driving on them, will stay the same and with the addition of hard arts away. Correct. Wow. That was hard work. Thank any you. Uh, any further Thank discussion? You. Thank you. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank okay. you. Very now, good. Thanks, Mark. Thank how you. soon can the signs go up, Fred? Well, we have to order them first. We have to order them. <laughs> oh, Mark, and I did ask Fred when I sat down, and I and I do want to ask about this. Normally, when you have signs like that, and the existing signs, which are mostly in the Mill Road, um, uh, Little River Road, Lock Road area. But sh in case there is a violation, in case a police officer is stopping somebody for a violation, when we're going to have the signs done up, should there not be a tag line under the no through trucking that references the particular ordinance so that the police officer can write that on 
Well, this is this is ordinance. Ordinance, yeah. I I don't think we do that for other types of signs, necessarily, do we? So we we don't, but most of the other signs we have are regulatory under state statute. Mm-hmm. So I hadn't thought about that. I would that think one. it would be sensible to put that so the police officer can just stipulate under uh, ordinance, you know, 769, section seven something. Well, I we can do that. I the think that bed, you you <laughs> state the uh, RSA. Yeah. Yeah, uh, for weight limits. Yeah. 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 Frostbeard. Right. You, you that way you, there's you no. You put the RSA on there yeah. and right. state it because yeah. they had a conversation about no RSA on there, no uh, yeah. teeth. Yeah. Uh, I believe some of our um, signs do state town ordinances as well. I, I, I'm not 100% sure of this, but I believe, for example, um, some of the signs that relate to picking up dog waste and yeah. some of the signs that Those relate to dogs on the beach, signs, yeah. I think, have the, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I can kind of picture Ordinance. down at Billy Joan, Joe Brown Park. Yeah, 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 I think yeah. So, so. But the signs over on Mill Road and Lock Road and all those, they've been there for a long time. That's what I'm saying. So and if people... Uh, like us come along and change the ordinance every five minutes, how many times are you going to replace all those signs? I think I'll just leave that stuff it's alone. It's not that many signs, Michael, but I think from a legal standpoint, we need to Do we reference need to? the ordinance. From a legal I, I, point of view? I, I don't think we need to make that decision ourselves as a board. I think we can leave that to Fred and the well, police well, chief and the town attorney. I think we need to reference the ordinance where a police officer is going to be standing there without a clue as to what <coughs> these signs mean. Well, we'll talk to the chief and see. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Right. Idea. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Next item, waste collection on private properties. Mary Louise, uh, you requested that this be uh, added to the agenda. Yes, I sent all of you a an email with my recommendations. Once again, starting to do this a little at a time, we have got to get control of this waste collection stuff. Um, Fred, how far along are we on identifying the private roads? And you have a, a I well, think... Well, wait a minute. This, the, the item on the agenda is waste collection on private property. Right, That's, but I just want to make sure that this, that we're pretty comfortable that these are the private properties that we are aware of now. I just hate getting blindsided. If we're going to address this, I just uh, want to make sure we're addressing it I think it that there's a way of addressing properly. it and not... Uh, Worrying about that, but why well, don't you I worry continue? about everything. So there why you don't go. you continue on your? So I took the list that Fred prepared for us, or Fred and Keith, and I divided the list into three sections. And the first section A is the churches, the Methodist Church on Lafayette Road, the Congregational Church on Winnicott Road, Our Lady of Miraculous Metal Church on Route One, and Sacred Heart School on Route One. Um, it's my understanding that town vehicles are at the current time going on to these properties to collect the waste. Private property, private as, opposed, property. as opposed to private road. Correct. Right. Now, my recommendation for the A segment, which is the three churches and the Sacred Heart School, is as follows. I move that we stipulate that all three churches have the ability to purchase carts and place those on the town roadway to pick them up for collection, or they are welcome to transport their waste to the transfer station on their own, as it suits them. The church, however, the church school, however, would need to pay for its own dumpster, uh, hire its own dumpster, and pay for private removal. The second section is the mobile home parks. Taylor River Estates, Four Seasons, Hemlock Haven, and Hampton Beach Trailer Park. My recommendation on that section of the private properties is as follows. The three of the mobile home parks are located on planning board approved town owned roads. They're not class five roads, but they're town approved roads. The residents can continue to place carts on the town road for pickup. I believe they're doing those at least in Hemlock Haven and, and um, Four Seasons. Four Seasons. I think they're also doing that, Fred, on the uh, uh, Taylor River Estates. Taylor River they are, yes. Yeah. So my recommendation would be that we continue as long as these individuals have their carts and put them out on the public way so the truck can just go down and collect, that they can continue pick up as usual. 
but for the Hampton Beach Trailer Park, due to the quantity of waste and the difficulty of accessing with the town vehicles and the impossibility of having all that stuff, as Mr. Pierce pointed out last week, having God knows how many carts strung out along the, the street, they need to be told to hire dumpsters and pay for private removal. And the third segment is businesses. Um, these businesses we are accessing by means of driving onto their private property and that has got to stop. That's the Ocean Walk on Ocean Boulevard, the Toll Farm Market on Toll Farm Road, Hody's in, uh, Restaurant on Route 1, the Depot Square Restaurant, JD's Super Beef and uh, JD's Super Beef, Beef on Route 1, and the Fun Child Care on Stickney Terrace, which is off Route 1, and the Liberty Gardens on Barber Road. As I indicated in my email to you, I have personally talked with uh, John Goodwin, who owns the property Liberty Gardens on Barber Road, and the town has been going on that private property since former selectman Frank Fitzgerald owned it uh, to pick up the waste. And Mr. Goodman was very gracious and said he would be more than happy to see to it that carts are put out on Barber Road uh, to relieve the town of the responsibility of going on his private property. So I will move that we take the list that the manager provided us uh, regarding private properties and have the have them segmented with the churches, the ho mobile home parks, and the businesses, and move that we make these adjustments as of um, today's date. I second that motion. Discussion. Any comments? Yes, I have a couple of questions. Uh, why are you saying this is a question, not so much a comment? Why are you saying that the Sacred Heart School has to get their own dumpster? That's why a private. Can't? That's a private. Um, uh, school operation that has nothing to do with the town. Why well, can't so they? So are all the businesses. In town. Yeah. It's church-owned property, and it's just, oh, it's up to you. I. I mean, I'm just asking. I'm just asking why you're separating the school from the churches and separating the school again from the businesses. Because, to me, in relation to this issue, they're all pretty much the same. And why you're. Uh, sort of singling them out, I couldn't figure out why you just, they just can't use well, parts I also. Well, I put that together. If you want to make changes, you want to make amendments, mm -hmm. you want to tell me to go jump in the ocean. Well, I was thinking about that part. The jetty. But back to, not jumping in the ocean so much, but the Sacred Heart School, I, I would suggest we treat all the churches and the school the same. But it's not a church, it's a school. I said, and the school the same. Whatever. Uh, uh, because, I, I mean, I, I don't want anybody to think for one minute that we're going to single anybody out. and uh, Well, by do means of doing this, I mean, you are singling people out. When you do no, that. we're not. We're, put yes, we we're putting them all together. No. We're, we're putting all the likes and with the likes and all the dislikes with the dislikes. No, these... Did, did you have anything... Else? Mike, I, I may have a solution to that. Did you have other comments beyond oh, the yeah. singling out? Uh, yeah, one, one more other issue. Um, uh, the question about transporting the to the transfer uh, transfer station on their own. Yeah. Now we're going to be paying the uh, usual fee for that. We have eliminated the fee for taking your stuff to the transfer station. Correct. So you have to pay to take it to the transfer station for your business now. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what we're doing then is we're saying to businesses that if you don't put an extra curb, you have to pay to take it to the transfer station, which one could argue that having a town pick it up is going to cost the town more than if they brought it to the transfer station, but I won't go there. That's a different philosophical issue. Well, you voted. Uh, we all I know. Voted. We all, all agree. Now. I'm trying to keep it all the same across the board. That's my argument with this stuff. So when we're going to do that or transport to the transfer, transport to the transfer station, that option has to be available for all of it, not just some of it. That's all I'm trying to say. Everything on that has to be available. But that's not unique to these properties. I, I mean, basically, um, a business can bring a curb There are truck. already properties. A business can on bring it. I, I, I understand that, but we, you didn't say that in here. I just want to make sure we're going to follow this word for word, that we make sure that we say that. Can I, can I try a, a little bit of a twist on this? Um, I, I'm basically... I'm in agreement with what you're trying to do, okay? Um, I looked at this, and, and I agree. We, we should stop going on private property to, to pick up 
solid waste. Um, do you know where the waste is at JD's? Because he's on Kershaw Avenue. He can put it just right on. There's room to put the carts there. Because I, I was looking at that yesterday. Yeah. And he has on plenty of room. There's room on Hackett Lane. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Kurt, that's Kershaw. But it wouldn't get on. Kershaw. Yeah. 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 There's room. But at any rate, uh, I agree. Because I thought he was recycling and putting them both out to that side street. Mm. I haven't seen him on the collection I, I, day. But it was my understanding wow. that they've been going on the property. I agree that, that we should stop going on private property to pick mm. up solid waste. And I'm yeah. purely addressing in that statement um, private property as opposed to private roads. Right. I'm viewing private roads as a separate issue. Yes. Um, as you may have seen, I sent Fred an email, yes. copied the board, yeah. and I think before we dive into that issue, we need to understand and have definitions right. and examples Absolutely. of, you know, class two, class three, class right. four, and then when we get in a planning board approved versus mm -hmm. ancient history before. So at any rate, right. so I'm not talking about private roads. Um, I would prefer that we address it as a statement of policy as opposed to going one by one by one through different. I don't think we need to go through a whole bunch of individual properties. properties. I think we can simply make a motion that that um, DPW will not be going on private property in the future to pick up solid waste and leave it to Fred and DPW and whatever to figure that, out. that out. Because we, if, if, it, if, we ma if we make the motion that way, if to your point of is the list complete, if something else is identified several weeks down the road, the problem is solved. We've right. made our motion or whatever. And, um, I like that idea, general motion and, and general terms. So at that any way, rate, everybody's treated the same. Let, let me, let me kind of continue with some of the thoughts. Um, I think, and, and I did talk about this with, with Keith last week after one of the CBA meetings, uh, I think we can certainly make that motion and all, but I think in terms of implementation and whatever, Keith is tasked to come back to us sometime in September, could be the beginning, could be the end, mm -hmm. with an overall plan, okay? Right. And I think that this issue of not going on to private property, we're, we're providing the motion tonight, you know, conceivably or whatever, can be folded into that plan and let him figure out the timing that works in conjunction with any other changes. That's my next comment. Um, I think everything we're saying applies to both existing properties and no future <coughs> um, additions. And I'll comment on the trailer park. I, I know last week I expressed concern about stopping the pickup at the trailer park. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, I, I just feel bad that they pay an enormous amount of taxes, okay. get very little service, whatever. However, I talked with the DPW director about that as well. And, and then I went down there on Wednesday and, and drove through with a full-size pickup truck. And um, I, I think that the roads, I, I'm in agreement, the roads are, are just too narrow. There's, there's sharp turns. And to the issue of, of them bringing their stuff curbside, my view, and, and I, I know Keith feels this, well, it's just not practical. The carts are way down the yes. back corner of it. Yes. There's parking along King's Highway in front there. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, the, the, the King's Highway was totally loaded with cars yeah. right. um, when I was down there, you know, Wednesday afternoon. And it has so been for the last 50 years. Right. Yeah. So uh, uh, it hasn't changed. <laughs> and, and the other thing I felt better about is, is Keith was going to get some information, but it, it, there's basically 183 <laughs> units there, and he didn't feel like it was going to add more than a buck or two a month um, to the individual units. So it's not like we're you know, okay. killing them financially. So anyway, um, I just wanted to comment on that. Um, one specific question I do have in your proposal, Mary Louise, what do we do um, in, 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 in the case of um, properties that we have been picking up that have purchased carts that no longer have a use for those carts because we're no longer going, going to go in their property? For example, the trailer park, whatever. The trailer park's got what looks to me to be about 25-ish, 26, mm -hmm. 27 carts, yeah. which, assuming they go to a dumpster <coughs> or whatever, they've got no well, use for the carts. I believe that to the extent that, that an entity is no longer going to have a need for those carts because of our decision, right. I think we ought to um, take those cards, carts back, put them in our inventory, and refund oh, yes. them anything that that um well, that, that they sure. paid for since they're used we could refund a portion i would say i, I would be in favor of of let, let me continue i'll make a oh, motion okay. that amends your motion and see if, if people will go for it i would be in favor of the full amount because it's us making the decision um to stop Office something that's yeah oh, okay. um as long as the carts are in good condition or acceptable condition right so anyway my motion would be to amend Ma mary louise's motion 
um, to reflect that we will stop going on all private property going forward and that we will um, refund the full amount for the carts that are returned by any, any entities such as the trailer park where we're no longer going to be picking up in the, in the future. Now, now at this point, I just want to say, I think I, my original motion said something about today's date, but we need to be careful because there is going to be a little transition time here. I, I'd so like to fold that in August a September. 15th, I, I maybe, would prefer not to, for, to not to make that decision, but to give that guidance to Keith, Keith and let and him, have him fold him. that into his recommended plan in September. And he said he would prefer to, to address these things all as one yeah. um, piece rather than a step at a time. I got a question on the original motion. On the original motion, did you uh, indicate that in the motion, did you say you were going to have the school have to get private pickup? Yeah, you've got the printout. Right uh, I believe. Did you w make your motion exactly yes, as printed? I made okay. the motion and what I emailed okay. to you. I'd like, I'd in like in to my motion, because I have, not, I have not addressed the school in my motion, mm -hmm. so if, do I have a second for my motion? Oh, to the amendment. To the amendment, right. Okay, I'll second the okay. amendment. Um, okay. But then we're going to have I have not, as far as I'm concerned, because I have not, in my amendment, highlighted the school, mm -hmm. I believe that the school has the right, if they wish, to bring their carts curbside, mm -hmm. just like anybody else. And I don't see the school as being any different than any other business that wishes, if they wish to bring their trash curbside, why would you let every business in town conceivably bring their trash curbside and not let the Sacred Heart School. But by the same token, should they choose to bring it to the transfer station? Yeah. That's fine. That's their choice too. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think treat them all the same in other words. Right. I'd like to amend your original motion to saying treat everybody... <laughs> like we already have one amendment <laughs> on the table. We, we have to vote on that? Did we vote on the amendment yet? No. Okay, let's <laughs> vote on the amendment so we can get that out of the way. All in favor? Okay, now, now I'd like to make an amendment, second amendment, to treating everybody on private property the same. Period. With no exceptions. That covers the Sacred Heart School. I, I think we've said that. No, she said it. She was quoted there. He uh, no, she, her, her motion is dead. It's amended. No, no, no. He amended my motion. But it's the, all the rest of the original bloating sauce is still there. No, no. no. He amended. I, my oh, amendment. you completely deleted the right. whole thing. Essentially, my amendment. Yes. Right. Oh, I didn't yeah. know you were deleting right. and, oh, and your substituting. Carl, your okay. sorry. skills are lacking this evening. Okay. Excuse me? If, if Keith's going to talk about this in, towards the end of September. Yeah. Maybe beginning, maybe end, but yeah, sooner the better. Uh, well, I I would agree with that in one sense, but involving the trailer park, this is going to be a big change for them. They're only open until October fifteenth. Right. Right. Could we give a grace period? Take care of that. That's until right. Timing. October fifteenth when yes. they close. Yeah. And then they can have time to get the cots back make arrangements for next year, plan for it. Mm -hmm. it you know, would you pull Mike, a rug out from under a business can I, like that? Can, mm -hmm. can, I, can I suggest that maybe um, we, not part of the motion, whatever, that's passed, we're done with that. Keith but take that into consideration. Pass that on to Keith, but yep. quite frankly, I, I would defer it till October 15th for all. Um, Fine. You know, Fine. Well, why, this has been going on yeah, for right. 50 years. What, what's why do we want to inconvenience well, it, somebody it, that for way? a couple of weeks at the end of the season? Right. It doesn't make but, sense. But I think why not just apply that? But th that's that's to keep. But that's our Made suggestion. Sounds okay. Good. Very good. Okay. Purchasing policy amendment. Mary Louise, you requested this one as well. Yes, I did, and I emailed the um, amendment to all of you. Draft two. Draft two. Well, I put dates. <coughs> on my stuff and whether it's a second or third or fifth draft. Referring to page three of the current purchasing policy, which is uh, section 718-7, use of state and federal bids and proposals. It reads, in lieu of the requirements contained in this policy, the town may accept and use collective competitive bids and professional proposals awarded by the state of New Hampshire or the United States government where those bids or proposals have been conditioned for acceptance and use by the town. 
I have no idea what that means. Have been conditioned for acceptance and use by the town. I didn't just fall off the turnip truck, but I'm sorry. As far as I'm concerned, that's vague. And I think if we need to make any sense out of this, especially with the flap over the, the Jeep in public works, I think this can be phrased better so that everybody understands it. So my proposal to you to amend this section would say as follows, and I will, I will move uh, that we amend this section in the following manner. In lieu of the requirements contained in this policy, the town may accept and use collective competitive bids and professional proposals awarded by the state of New Hampshire or the United States government. In cases where the town uses state of New Hampshire base bid pricing, including separate base pricing for option packages for new model year vehicle purchases, department heads can use the state base figures as leverage to negotiate with any dealer for the lowest price, even when the state bid was awarded to a single dealer and has expired. If the per vehicle price exceeds $25,000, including options, discounts, and trade-in, permi trade permission to waive the bid process must be sought from the town manager and board of selectmen prior to purchase. Any options on the state bid list that a department head wishes to add to a base vehicle must be pre-approved by the town manager and board of selectmen. Specific details of package costs which have been negotiated based on the state bid prices must be presented. In cases where the town is utilizing state or federal funds for projects that require engineering services, those services shall be exempt from the bidding and solicitation requirements contained in this policy where it conflicts with state and federal laws and regulations. The Board of Selectmen shall be advised of bids and proposals utilizing state and federal funds consistent with the provisions of Section 718-4B of this policy. Go ahead throw that at Nick. Um, He's already got it. Oh, you got a copy? Okay, good. Um, I want our department heads to understand what they're dealing with. I confess that I was not intimately uh, associated with the uh, state bid policy. I find that the state, which is very logical and has a calendar year or a fiscal year of October to September, uh, the state is putting out its bids for its vehicles for what it wants in August prior to its October start of the year and they award apparently um, depending on the the vehicle that they want they award the, the bids to to a single dealer and once they've purchased what they want the bid expires it's pretty silly for us with the town meeting with the fiscal year starting in January and the town meeting not taking place till March so we probably don't have our funds until the end of March um, it's, it's silly not to be able to take advantage of the pricing in the state bids, even though the state bid, because the state doesn't care about it anymore, has already expired. So I think that's a decent leverage. I think this is a lot more clear for department heads. I have upped the price from 15000 to 25000 Even small vehicles, I think, uh, if you're talking the Jeeps or pickup trucks or whatever, should come in under that comfortably so that we'd have the ability to use the state bid figure without actually, uh, I mean the state doesn't care whether we're buying vehicles or not and they don't care what price they were buying them at. So for the convenience of basically Fred and the department heads, I think this is, is a much more clear statement of the potential of waiving the bid process and hopefully it'll keep us out of the Message. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion? Yes, I'll start off uh, for those people who seem to have some difficulty reading and understanding a couple of different points here without being tacky. I'm going to just hit it really hard like where it should be hit. It's pretty clear in 718-7, bid, very bid, the word bid, Mm -hmm. Not if, and, or but. This suggestion you're making is, well, if we wiggle around, use this bid that the state has, the sellers agreed to, 
Well, we can use that to talk about where we might buy something or not, whether we want grass in the back of the pickup truck or not. I mean, this goes on and on with your uh, <coughs> little change here. Options, lowest price. Well, you're violating the whole spirit of the law. Here, right here, in this policy, a purchasing policy, it says to bid. It doesn't say negotiate. It doesn't say what I want on Tuesdays. It doesn't say anything about that. And for those people who didn't read the state contract or didn't understand it, again, like we did the purchasing policy, it says very clearly effective from beginning and ending dates. It's not confusing. It's not ambiguous. It's not hard to understand because Michael Pierce could understand it. So if I can understand that and I can understand the purchasing policy, I am somewhat distressed in believing that the members of the other members of this board would have a problem understanding either one of those. So I'm putting all that aside. What you're doing here with the $25,000 is you're adding another number into the mix. Mm -hmm. Well, we've already set the limit at 15000 Now, I suppose Mike Pierce next week, because he likes the chief of police and he wants a $50,000 cruiser, and he bought it by mistake and didn't follow the purchasing policy, I'm going to make that exception the next week. What we're doing with this, we're trying to cover up for mistakes. This is not anything to do with reality. You're taking a mistake and saying, oh, we can excuse that in the future. And I don't care for that at all. Okay. Any other discussion? Yes. Oh, Phil, Can I'll I? defer to you. Go ahead, and then I have a... Well, I just know there's been uh, some some uh, four or five instances that Selectman Pierce talked about last week. We are now going to institute a procedure, and that was passed last week. That remains unchanged by this. Is that correct? No. It's in uh, basically with this... Um, we've essentially excluded, um, as far as I'm concerned, passenger vehicles by putting the amount up to 25000 Phil? Can, can I comment? Yeah. Mary Lewis, you've had your choice. Do you mind, Phil? Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Um, this amendment complicates the policy as opposed to simplifying it. Um, what we've basically done is we've added two paragraphs um, to, to 718.7 by inserting detailed rules and procedures mm -hmm. for passenger vehicles purchased off state contracts. My take is we buy a new passenger vehicle probably about once every five years. Um, we, we bought this Jeep recently. Last one before that, I believe, was the Pontiac that the DPW director was, yeah, was driving. Years ago. And yeah. then I think before that was probably 10 years ago, Chief Leip had a Ford Taurus, which yeah. I think we still have. So we, we, we hardly ever buy new passenger vehicles. Um, the scope of a purchasing policy does not currently and should not include detailed procedures for specific types of items. It just makes it more complicated and it's going to lead to less conformance. The more you complicate this, the tougher you make it for people to conform. Um, this amendment has the Board of Selectmen deciding what options are included on vehicles. In the future, will we be approving the options on police cur cruisers, pickup trucks, backhoes, or whatever? That, that just doesn't make sense. The, the, the purchasing policy, with its current language, is not that complicated. It's actually quite simple. Basically, what it says is up to $1,000 only requires department head approval. From 1000 to 15000 also requires town manager approval. Over 15000 must be competitively bid with a couple of options for exclusions. Mm -hmm. One, purchasing directly off a state or federal contract need not be competitively bid, period. Stop it there. It's simple. If you buy it off a state of New Hampshire contract, you don't have to bid it. That's an exclusion as it stands today. A waiver to skip the competitive bid process can be approved by the selectmen. If you take this whole scenario, on April 29th, Keith was in and asked for waivers on three um, bid items or items that he was going for over $15,000, all three of those were approved. He simply at that point could have said, I've got a price of whatever, $18,000, blah, 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 lays out how he negotiated that or whatever he wishes to do. I would like um, a waiver to have to bid that out. And he 
conceivably could have had a fourth one. I think most of the time we've approved. They may not have been uni unanimous, but most of the time um, we've approved um, requests for waivers. Um, less than three responses to a bid, or if somebody wants to award it to other than the low bidder, which will make sense at times, can be a waiver approved by the selectman as well. Beyond that, the selectman just must approve all purchases over $50,000. Um, when the current policy is complied with, the public can have confidence in the integrity of the value associated with the purchases. They know that anything other than $15,000 is being competitively bid. There's three bidders and it's going to the low bidder unless it shows up at a public meeting. Okay? So y you know what's going on. It's, it's very simple. I would, similar to what Mike said, a little bit different words, I would characterize this amendment as the passenger vehicle loophole. Okay? And uh, I'm not kidding when I say this. I think this is the kind of approach that got the tax code um, into trouble, the, 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 the federal income tax code or whatever. You, you keep, oh, that didn't work. Let's thro throw some more language in here. Let's throw a couple of paragraphs in that. Let's throw a couple of paragraphs to deal with this. And what do you have? You have something that, you know, uh, maybe only the people that are professionals in the business understand. So I am absolutely opposed. I, I think it takes us in the wrong direction. Um, and again, the, the, the passenger vehicle increasing that to, to 25000 our threshold of 15000 requiring a competitive bid is not high. One of the things that I did in a motion, which must go back nine months, is increase the threshold that was $5,000 to $15,000 just with the goal of getting more compliance because there's less to worry about. Our $15,000 level is $5,000 higher than the 10000 um, level highlighted in the LGC um, article that I referenced. So I am just adamantly opposed to not just this, but any effort to add detailed procedures for individual um, items. Okay, I want to respond to that. I am reasonably conversant with the nuances of the English language, and I still say to you Have that you that paragraph, <laughs> that paragraph in the existing purchasing policy tells me nothing, not only as a selectman, but as a, a taxpayer and resident of this community. Number two, this is a waiver section. This is designed to help you waive using state and federal bids. Federal bids, I don't know, probably be for construction. I'm not too concerned about federal bids. But for the state bids, it's unfair to give, to infer that the department heads in the town of Hampton can piggyback on state bids when the state bid is put out at the state's convenience, the August of the year before, and when the state grabs up all the vehicles from the one dealership that it's awarded the bid to, then the, then the bid is closed. And you made that point yourself during the discussion on the purchase of the Jeep. The state bid had all gone bye-bye, so That's why right. the hell is he doing this? Right. Why can we not use the state bid process and the state bid amount, which does seem logical because theoretically it should be lower than one of us or a single town could negotiate, why can we not stipulate that we can use the state bid price that they negotiated for that particular there's nothing model that, year. There's nothing that prevents the department head from using that logic and asking for a waiver. You don't need language in the purchasing policy. But this is... I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt. I don't want to go on forever, but I don't want to Well, interrupt. I don't want to go on forever either, but I think it's... But it's you're focusing on automobiles. Mary, Mary Louise, this can apply to salt, to gasoline, to diesel, to yeah, computers. Yeah, to to it, it's to everything yeah, on a state yeah, bid. I want to thank Mr. Pierce and Selectman Wilson for, for their interest in the matter. and It's, it's caused a little bit of um, consternation in the board, and I think we had this addressed last week. But I, I don't think you're going to get the votes for it, and I would just say as a matter of courtesy, do you want to pull the motion? Or do you want to go with a bill? Because it, I, I don't think it's going to pass. And we can talk about it for another half hour. But I, I, would, I would like to bring this to a vote. You do, would? Okay. Yeah. All, in fa all in favor? All opposed? One, four. Uh, we'll see in favor. Okay. Very good. Next item, Mary Louise, you requested this one. I'm not clear what it was, but it was uh, CI P review discussion. Yes, I think we need to start taking a look at, I mean, we're going to be coming up on Warren articles, and the 
PIP and I had my whole cluster. Here it is. Because some of the things need to be rewiggled on this from my perspective. And I think we ought to uh, go back and take. Um, the, we have a memo in here from Public Works on the projected cost of the Bicentennial Park seawall. Did, did you get the sheet that I emailed? Um, well, I've got. I, I emailed the sheet which has got everything all on one page. Did you I get a, a date yeah. on it? Well, this I am working to the pub from the Public Works on the right, seawall. Right, And by the, by the by, and I have the municipal tax rate projection. Wait a minute, I've got. Right. Oh, and then I have the well, I have the departmental. Okay. What what thing. just just to try and simplify for it, make yes. sure you know what I got. What I have done in this municipal tax rate projection yes. is taken all of the CIP yes. input that we've had, whether it's from DPW, whether it's from fire, and so on yeah, and so no forth. There's no date on this. What are you talking about? Well, there's no date on this. Once again. No, this is something that I emailed out Friday or Saturday. Yes, but you know. There is a date on it. There is a date. On here? Yeah, seven twenty six thirteen. Okay, there's a date. Okay, that that's after the one I have. Thank you. Okay, because I, I, sure I just want to make sure that you all understand. Right. This has all of the items in the CIP yeah. for all departments yeah. on one piece of paper between 2014 and 2019. Right. The reason they, they have to be there in order to do the, the tax rate calculation. Right, but what I'm trying to say is I think some of these need to be adjusted, which okay, is why I was looking for a discussion. Okay. What, what, do you, what do you them. think should be it? The 600000 that Keith, and I don't see the seawall on here. Are you going to add that? I'm looking really quickly down here because he has th his memo of July 25th is talking about the seawall, uh, 600000 for inclusion in the CIP, projected cost $500,000. Are we going to add that? Yes. No. But that's not on here. Not yet. Apparently right. not. That's okay. why I'm no, saying absolutely. I'd like to make sure that this is updated. The other thing is that you're showing a fire pumper truck replacement. Um, I think I think items like that. First of all, if we wait till 2015 to replace the 1988 pumper, we ought to have our heads examined. Well, that's and what I the chief just requested. That's a, a well. I I still think bigger things should go in there. Anyway, and the part um, where are we? Wait a minute. Five corners reconstruction and improvements. I would pull that entirely or push it forward to 2020 or something. That is absolutely ridiculous to, to so plug in a figure of So you're saying on that point is that you don't care out. about the most accidents in Hampton nonsense. intersection. Nonsense. What? Yeah, that's okay. right from can the can we, chief police nonsense. record. Can we, Mary Louise is making some, suggest some suggestions yeah. for amendments. Okay, one is mm -hmm. to add the um, seawall mm -hmm. to 2016, yeah. I believe it was. And was get a more and, realistic and, and that price. Was, that was my oversight because I intended it's to right. do that and, um, and I don't see And it get a more realistic price. Mm -hmm. Not to rebuild the seawall as it was when it fell all apart, but a price to build a seawall that can better protect as we run around assigning people to study groups on the sea rising. Thank you. Okay, and this, if we that, that is one. Okay, yes. do we have a consensus that we should add the seawall at five hundred thousand dollars to the two thousand sixteen mm, CIP? No, Six. we'd add the seawall with the corrected price. Yeah, wait, wait, That's well, not a realistic. Well, price. then there's not a decision to make, so we'll leave it out of there. If, if well, is that what the you're public works director has given us this, so he needs to be given other guidance. If you want, what year did he want to do that? 2016, I believe. 16, I think it is. Okay. I mean, he's going to the trouble of looking at this stuff, but in in the absence of adequate guidance, as we talk okay. about all the water coming up, I would think we let, would let get let a more realistic let price. Let me, let me bring something up. Yes. One, one of the things that we did last year yes. with the CIP and the money warrant articles is we purely focused on two years out, and in, in, in the context of, of where we're at now, that would be 2014, 2015. Right. And we basically said something, 2016, in this case, 2016 through 2019, <coughs> let's not debate that. It's, it's so right. far out. Let's leave the stuff in there as submitted. That way it's on the radar. 
um, somebody can see it, but to, to spend a lot of time debating how much we might spend or what we might or might not do in 2016 through 2019, I, I don't think it's productive. I think it is clearly productive to, d to discuss the 2014 oh, yeah. items. I and mean, those are, and, and I agree. Which and is I where think five 15 quarters as well. Come in, come so in, I would like to suggest that. that we limit any discussion to changes in the CIP. I will add that um, requested the DPW director for the seawall to 2016 at $500,000. But I would like to, to suggest that we limit our discussion to 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. Well, on 15, I would, I would move that we get rid of that 600000 for the Five Corners intersection. We have a lot more things to spend money on than tinkering around with Five Corners. Any, anybody else comment on that? Oh, yes. Um, I will comment on that. Before I see Five Corners go down the toilet, or down the drain, however you want to say that, I will. Uh, I would suggest we get rid of that equipment wash bay because we've already proved beyond a reasonable. Okay, but let, let's not let, let's let's stick with one at a time, Mike. So, so you're not in favor of removing um, the five corners intersection from the 2015 CIP? No, I'm not. Okay. Did you want to make a motion to remove that? Yes, yeah. I will make a motion okay. to remove that. Is it's, there a second? Ridiculous. Is there a second? Did we, this was a little ahead of me, but were we surveying that to find out if we opened up land down there? Yes. Is that come in? Yes, oh yeah, the plans have been done, yes. The yeah. survey plans are available, yes. Do we own it up land? I believe we need one easement of a few feet. <coughs> and they volunteered to give that, provided we mm. change the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested in keeping it in You there. have a lot. But does anybody want a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Abstain? Okay. Mary Louise and Mike in favor. Mike Pierce and I opposed. Phil abstain. It stays in there because the motion did not carry. Um, I'm not absolutely diametrically opposed to what you just said. I'd like to hear from the DPW director next time he's in before we go pulling that. that that's, yeah. that's the reason I voted against it. Anything else okay. on that, Mary? We'll need more. Well, we, we are going to sit down, I assume, and go over the money, the, the warrant articles, especially the money articles. Oh, yeah, we're going to start that. Point, yeah. You've not proposed any changes to what's listed for 14, though. Yeah. Okay. Anything else in 15? Nope. Okay. Any other discussion on that CIP area? Yeah, I would like to mention that if we're going to start whacking my uh, favorite thing, I'll, I'll, I'll whack uh, that washdown bay for 14. That will help our tax rate considerably, 500,000. Voters already, no, I don't think we need that. That's a waste of money. If we take care of our vehicles properly and if we put the proper undercoating on them when we purchase them and we do all the preventive maintenance, it's been pretty well documented that washdown facilities are a waste of money for $500,000. Don't, don't Be, forget... That's roughly a hundred thousand ish, I believe. For the wash, the wash bay yes. and the balance is for a, a garage, I think, that is primarily sewer and drain. Storage. Four hundred for the building. Right. Yeah. That's primarily sewer and drain, is that the case? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the sewer and drain truck isn't freezing in the winter. I, I would to my, to Mike's comment, I mean I, I opposed this last year and, and it's not like I'm adequately opposed you know, to the concept or whatever, but just based on what's going on. Our, our tax rate, without doing anything, without doing anything in operating, without doing a fire inspector, without doing anything, our municipal tax rate is going up 5%, okay? Um, the sewer and drain thing at, at, at $500,000, adding on to that increase that we've already got, I think if we go forward with that, it's DOA. One thing that I would, I don't think we should make a decision tonight, but maybe it's something that that the town manager want to bring might want to bring back to the DPW director and discuss is I think a wash bay only that's designed in a manner that does not circumvent adding on in the way of the building at such at some future date I think has a chance of passing but I I think I don't think we're ever going to have in the in the near future a a wash bay if it's tied to a five hundred thousand dollar purchase especially if you look look at what's going on with the tax rate. In 2015, yeah. okay, that's five or six percent, and and 14. Yeah. Then we've got all these other things that are being proposed by DPW in 15. So it gets worse. It doesn't get better from the standpoint of the probability 
of, of something like that. So that would be, I, I'm not in favor of removing it at this point as Mike's mm -hmm. proposed. I would ask the manager to go back mm -hmm. and, and discuss that with the DPW director in the context mm -hmm. of a, uh, you know, the wash bay um, only. And you're looking at the effects here of kicking the can down the road. Actually, year after year, I, after I don't, year. I, I don't, I don't see it that way, Mary Louise. I, 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 I see it more as a function of, of mm -hmm. being practical. One of the things that I think we've been very successful in the last two or three or four years, okay, is is finding balance between ideal solutions and and you know the so-called you know um, doing it on the cheap type mm -hmm. thing or whatever and, and I'll give you some examples to that when the when the fire stations um, both of them were first proposed um, and went on the ballot I think it was in 2011 mm -hmm. that was um, close to eight million dollars seven point seven million dollars ultimately by coming up with a more balanced solution not that seven point seven was necessarily ideal I'm sure it more money could have been spent. But by coming in with a more balanced solution of 5.7, the voters approved it. And I don't think public safety is, is suffering with the plan for the two fire stations we're building now versus the $2 million. The Church Street pump station initially was proposed at $8 million, okay? What we said as a board, and it was before you guys got on, that that's just too much money. We need to look for alternatives or whatever. DPW did. They came in with a proposal that was $4.8 million and instead of $8 million, and actually the, the bids came in lower than they anticipated and ended up at $3.8 million, okay? In the case of the salt shed, okay, that was initially proposed um, at like 225, 250,000, was shot down several times or whatever. We looked at that. We came in with a proposal that was again a balanced solution, and the problem was solved for 150,000 dollars. You look at you look yet. at the Kids Kingdom. Kids <laughs> Kingdom was proposed last year at 100,000 dollars, and we said we think that there are alternatives to mm -hmm. to refurbishing the equipment that we've got. And I suspect by the time all said and done, we're probably only going to spend about $5,000 instead of $100,000 and, and get more than a couple of years of, of useful life. So I, I would like to at least let the manager take that back and report back next week as to what the DPW director's feelings were. Does that make sense, Fred? Or I'll no, ask. I certainly. think what we need to do here, Mr. Chairman, is if, we, if you look at these numbers across the bottom, which you elegantly pointed out, it's going to be pretty significant increases every year in the taxes. Mm -hmm. And I can remember just a few years back, the spending got out of control in Hampton for about six or eight years, and all of a sudden the voters said no to everything. They started saying no to the budget. They said no to everything. So I think you have to convey to the voters and the taxpayers that we are watching the money but not being too tight that we step on ourselves. I think we have to be very careful to convey that message that we're trying to watch it because people, uh, taxes go up because the value of properties are going up right now. They're going to go up anyway, whether we spend any more money or not. And if you add this on top of that, that's going to hit people's billfolds pretty hard. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I don't exactly roll in the chips, so I would like to keep these tax rates at a reasonable rate. And I think most people in Hampton would like to feel we're looking out for that same interest. A couple of comments, Mike. A 100000 or whatever, $150,000 wash bay, as opposed to um, a $500,000, mm -hmm. um, including a garage, um, is, is, would be a substantial um, reduction. I've done a few numbers, but I'm not comfortable enough that I, I want to check those. And it, it would be very substantial. So, can how we leave that as far as 2014 at that? Yes. How much is uh, the uh, 600,000 for five corners with your little calculation? That's in two. That's in 2000. Uh, 2015. Okay. Basically, one way you can look at it is, in very rough terms, mm -hmm. from a municipal tax standpoint, municipal spending is about. Twenty million dollars a year net of revenues. It's about twenty-five, mm -hmm. twenty-six million, to six million in revenues, and mm -hmm. so you basically got about twenty million-ish mm -hmm. um, in spending. Mm -hmm. Therefore, um, every two hundred thousand dollars represents roughly about one percent. Oh, really? um, if that gives you a yep. yeah, the, the other right. thing, just to be aware of, is increased values of properties does not affect the tax rate. Well, uh, it does not affect taxes. 
As, as property values increase, that's the denominator in the tax rate calculation. Mm -hmm. So it, it does not, as, the, as, as property values grow and you calculate the tax rate, mm -hmm. um, the, the tax oh, rate... Oh, in, in theory it'll all wash out, right? Well, it's not in theory, it's, it's, it's math, it's basic math. Well, yeah, one could say that, yeah. The, I, the don't I don't necessarily subscribe to that, but that's okay. Uh, well, Mike, it, it, just so you understand, it's very simple. If you spend $20 million mm -hmm. one year, mm -hmm. okay, and if you spend $20 million the next year, you've got to bring in $20 million. Exactly. It, 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 yeah, but your you're, spending you're, doesn't yeah, but go you're, you're looking at the total grand picture for the town. I'm looking at, from, say, at my at my, a house. If you have a house that's worth X dollars today and it doubles in values tomorrow, I'll bet your taxes are going to go up significantly. Not if, it, not if, not unless yours go up disproportionate to everyone else's. If it doubles in value, you don't think my taxes are going to go not up? If, not if everybody doubles. Your oh, I didn't say. I said mine. I didn't oh. say everybody well, else. No. Now you're We're talking not worried about, about yours. Yeah, okay. You're, anything you're else on this side? You're talking about your whole town. I'm talking about me. Anything <laughs> else? Yes. Yes. I continually hear people telling me mm -hmm. that oh, aren't we lucky because that lot which is sitting there naked is only bringing in $3,000 a year in tax revenue, whereas with a nice new big build of 3,600 whatever units and stuff you're putting on it, the, the building in this town is increasing the value of this town, and the more the value increases, the more 1,000 units you have to spread around on the tax base. So that should at right. least help right. to keep it. Oh, I in, agree. In in some building in some sense should help to keep the tax rate in check. Absolutely, it helps. Number two, this town has not passed a sewer construction and reconstruction bond since 1986. And now I'm not even talking about construction, I'm talking about reconstruction. And I talked about this in terms of that Route 1 intersection, which wasn't your favorite thing either because that line hey, is can going. We, can we stay and on the all CIP? the lines are crumbling under there. We, we're still behind the eight ball, just like the state of New Hampshire is behind the eight ball with only 14% of its roads in decent shape. So we're still neglecting what we need to do. Mary Louise, okay. we're, we're looking at it slowly, though. Uh, to beg your pardon for one second. Sorry to interrupt, uh, Mr. Chairman, but we're looking at extra road. Okay, that's in this plan, and we're going to do the plumbing underneath that as we go along, or check it to see if it's okay. It's all in the grand scheme. So I don't know that's if I... That's just one road. Well, we don't but you're paying for infiltration studies town-wide. Right, we're going to see what... of all the leakage into the old crappy sewer system that is rotting underneath the road. So we're okay, gonna, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't think we're on the path to solving anything. Yeah, that's discussion. a replacement, once okay. again. Can we, right. can we move on to the sure. next yes, item? Sure. Okay. Mayberry report. Yes. Um, we received a letter. Fred actually copied on a letter he received um, yeah. from Bruce Mayberry. That's the one you and, had to read three times. And he addressed. Um, Four times. Yeah, I didn't think it's that bad. Anyway, he he addressed the issue, the question that we asked, um, essentially the what would it cost um, to to um, do a study covering impact fee study covering all facilities and 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 I just highlighted a, a what I thought were a couple of key points in there one in the second paragraph I think it's a very important one impact fees cannot be assessed to make up for existing deficiencies in capital systems necessary to serve the the town's existing service demands right. most of the money we're spending is not a function of expansion it's a function of of replacing right. old facilities. I, I think, by and large, the fire stations fall into that category. I think the, the Church Street pump station falls into that category. So, um, you know, a lot, arguably most of what we're doing, um, you know, based on statute, um, does not apply to impact fees anyway. Number two, okay, um, he, he gives us a price based on doing it, um, guessing other places, while at the same time recommending doing anything that covers all facilities, he gives us a price of forty to fifty thousand dollars, which is, is is through the roof. Um, he basically um, mentions other avenues like RSA one forty nine I related to sewer storm water and what I thought was interesting is I went to look that up online, Fred, and it's been repealed. So I, I don't know if um, you know, it, it, I, I went to the statutes online, uh, RSA 149 has been repealed. So I, don't, I suspect it's probably a replacement um, 
statute. Well, if they repeal 149I, I hope they've given it a replacement well, because otherwise we don't have a sewer plant. There, there, must, be, there must be because it, it, it shows it's repealed. I, I think the, the bottom line is I, I would like – this is a planning board responsibility. The only reason we got into this discussion um, is, is they indicated they didn't have any money budgeted. That's what it was – in the in the order of well, um, Mary Louise, can I finish? When it was in along the order of, of four or five thousand dollars or whatever, at forty or fifty thousand dollars out of our budget, that's not going to happen. My take is 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 let the planning board do their job. It's their responsibility, and 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 let's get the board of selectmen out of the business of impact fees. But the board of selectmen are the ones who started this last fall because you directed the manager to send the information and the letter, et cetera, which I got a copy of, courtesy of Mr. Bean in my conversation with him. You guys sent the letter to the planning board mm -hmm. regarding uh, assessing the impact fees from Uni okay. Services mm -hmm. because they asked of their own volition in 2002 to give the public in this town the authority to assess the fees, and they still haven't done it. My, my observation is the planning board does not wish to move forward on this. It's forty to fifty thousand dollars. I will make a motion that we just, for the time being, months and months, that we drop the issue of. of impact fees. It's the planning boards mm -hmm. under their authority, their responsibility, and let them do their job. That's my motion. You want to drop it? Hmm? You're saying you want to drop it? Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's do an item that we oh, should continue to discuss. No. Oh, I, I, I'll level. second that, but I want to I, I make a couple of comments. So I'll second with the privilege of making a couple of comments. Mm -hmm. <coughs> if we're going to say that the planning board is their responsibility, which I agree with. We're not saying it's by statute, correct? Yeah. Yes. No, 674. It is. I'm, not, I'm not debating any of that. Right. It's just that the question becomes, if they decide they would like to do something for this, they don't have any money. So what do they have to do? Well, Come they can plan in their budget. They, they can put it in their budget for they next year. They can put it in their budget. They can put it in their budget. They they can put it in Is their that budget. the right avenue to try? Yes. It? Yeah. But if you watch the planning board meetings, and Mary Louise, you've been there a lot lately, I suspect you... Uh, By and large, the planning board doesn't have an interest in, right. in instituting municipal, mm -hmm. and, and I think that they have some good reasons for that based on the existing facilities where we're spending it. So okay. we have a motion, we have a second, we're ready to take a vote. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, good. I'm glad that subject's going. <laughs> Any other old business? Yes, I have some old business. Um, regarding dread. And I don't. I don't want to be misunderstood because I am going to address something that's a little bit sensitive, but the only option I have is to do this publicly. I have been asking, first in regard to the joint operation plan, uh, when we apparently couldn't get anyone from Dread Down to, to talk to us, so discussions were conducted privately. And then, of course, with the uh, mess that took place at Hampton Beach on July 4th, where I really got exasperated and called Senator Stiles, and she kindly offered to uh, ask uh, Phil Bryce and some of the uh, individuals from Concord to come down and meet with us as a board in public on the issue of what was happening with the, uh, with the state of New Hampshire Beach in Hampton. Uh, in addition, we got a, uh, huh, what I consider an interesting email from uh, Mr. Hausman asking uh, basically if we had any foundation to base our seven cents a pound, our big increase from four cents to seven cents a pound, basically whether we, we thought we could do that. They are a contentious group. Um, but I have been giving this some thought lately, and I asked as recently as today whether a superintendent of Seacoast Parks has been appointed yet. And the answer, of, to the best of my understanding, as of the 5th of August 2013, uh, that, that position has not been filled. There is an individual temporarily, I guess, uh, sticking his finger in the dike for the state. But this makes three seasons, three summers since Mr. Warburton left, that there has been no official um, superintendent of Seacoast Parks. And the reason I was thinking of this is that I thought back to probably a month ago 
Richard, when you volunteered the fact that you had um, put in an application for that position. Now, I've been rather um, trusting, I guess, along the way here, and I kept thinking we were going to see a superintendent appointed, that they were conversing and they were thinking about doing this. And uh, nothing is happening, and nothing is happening. And when I talked to you after I talked to Senator Stiles, I asked you if we could set up a meeting since Nancy was kind enough to offer. She guaranteed me that they would come down and meet with us in public. And we had a lot of stuff on the agenda. I think it was the 15th of July, and we've been going in. And we still haven't set anything up. And I, I don't mean this personally, but I am concerned at this point in time since... If your application is still active... I have not submitted an application. Mm -hmm. I heard that they, you know, so, sometimes you, you, <coughs> almost, you almost wonder if, you, if it pays to be honest or whatever. No, okay. I, 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 I disclosed I something simply so there wouldn't be right. any question, okay? Right. If, um, I sent a resume in, period, okay? And that was it. I left it at that. To the best of my knowledge, the position has not been posted yet. Okay? It hasn't even been posted? Oh the, the, that is my understanding. I've not pursued it. I just sent a resume to yeah. get my name in the loop as somebody to be yeah. considered. I may not even be interested. I don't even know what the position pays. I was just or concerned whatever, okay? that we might be. So, at any rate, I my understanding though is is that the position was budgeted and it is in the budget beginning July 1. I suspect the reason that they're just pursuing it now is they didn't know if they were going to have the budgeted funds. Okay. Uh -huh. My understanding is that they do. Okay, and I believe they an they anticipate filling that position this fall. In other words, I don't think so from what I'm hearing next season. summer okay. is an issue. So my take in terms of meetings with the state, and I, I thought that we had a consensus not to move ahead on either of these two issues with a meeting, and I believe that there are two distinct issues, okay? I believe one issue is the issue of trash at the beach, right. and I think that you're, it's just not a, a productive discussion to have with, with director-level people and commissioner-level people in dread, okay? I think that that's a discussion that's more productive with the individual that they ultimately hire to be the SECO superintendent. That's one discussion, and I would hold off on that one until the position is filled. I think the second discussion mm -hmm. goes to the issue that we've talked about, about financial inequities mm -hmm. with the state of New Hampshire, and I am adamantly opposed to going ahead with that discussion until such time as, as we feel comfortable with our numbers. So I think if, uh, you know, this is like the third time we've had this discussion, okay? I that, so I, I would, uh, you keep bringing it up, that's fine. I would appreciate it if you would make a motion as to what you want to do, and, and if the votes are there, we will set up the meeting. Um, if not, we won't, and then let's Move on. Well, we're just getting to the end of the season, and I've been concerned that we haven't really had a chance to talk to the individuals who are making the mess down there. And I was just afraid that we were being possibly part, held. Part of the, a big part of the problem, and, and I think most people that, that are familiar with that, mm -hmm. um, and I'm pretty familiar with it, I'm down there mm -hmm. all the time. Brian Warburton is very familiar with it. I think the biggest single reason that we have issues that are not inequities with the state of New Hampshire, but the tra is, is I think, because of the lack of, of a local operational supervisor mm -hmm. trying to run it yes. out of Concord, quite frankly, as opposed to having somebody local. Um, mm -hmm. so. Before you make a, may I, Mr. Chairman? May I? I'm, I'm not going to make a motion, but I just, I've been concerned that we've been pushing this off. Cool. So that's why I brought it up. Yeah. Did anybody see this? Uh, yeah. Yesterday's paper. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just wanted to, to compliment the state and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and what a fabulous job they do down there. And if you look at uh, um, that beach, and I'm down there every day from morning to night, uh, it, the state does a fabulous job down there. And uh, we do a fabulous job down there. And our police and our fire and our taxpayers and our business people and the people in the precinct. And there's, there's, a, there's a, a, a boundary issue and a money issue, and we're going to work that. And that's grown long in the tooth. And uh, you know, whether uh, someone is local that, that, that runs that uh, uh, operation, who's ever running it now, I think they're doing a heck of a job. And in terms of sanitation, in terms of those, those, uh, those bathhouses, the beaches, 
the uh, the law enforcement, the fire protection, the crowds that go there. I mean, a quarter million people can't be wrong, and they're flocking to those that beach. And uh, it's pristine. You can run on that beach barefoot, and it is one of the finest, nicest beaches that I've ever been on. And I've been in a couple, and I just wanted to say that. You just okay. Did you see the article, Portsmouth and Hampton pay the state's tab? <coughs> and it doesn't look like there's any hope. Well, I can guarantee you if we do nothing, um, then nothing will happen. Oh, I, and, I agree and, with you, and but Portsmouth, well, the other communities. I believe we move forward. Okay, any other new old, any other old business? Nope. Um, just one item. Fred, we had that um, letter to Oceanfront property owners, which I think is still um, pending. I don't believe yes, that we that's gone out and whatever. And, you know, I, I think we should, you know, try and get it out sooner rather than later. It's not, would you agree, Mike, w whether it's another week or two or whatever, it's probably not a, a big deal because no. we're talking about letting people do it after it's September. Easy. Right. But the thing that I would add is, is that um, when we talked about it last time, um, at least my perception, and, and I think other people had the same perception, was that the town-owned beach essentially went from um, the Northampton line all the way down to, to, to Northside Park, Joe B. Brown Park, wrapping around Beach Plum Way um, to the essentially where the state beach begins at, at High Street. Um, and then in addition to that, that there was Town Beach on the Sun Valley side. Um, that's not necessarily the case. One of, one of the things that we've, we found out in, in my belief, and Fred, please comment, but I think you and I are in agreement, the Town Beach actually stops at that walkway at Two Ancient Highway. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, well, and place code. right, and yeah. and the area in between that walkway, yeah. and um, essentially what would be Ruth Stimson Park, yeah. is is actually not Town um, Beach, and then the Town Beach picks up again where Ruth Stimson Park and Bicentennial Park are, right. and then it turns into State Beach. Um, at, that at that point, used to be. So who right. yeah. that? And, and I've actually looked at the deeds on okay. on properties, like like for example, my deed runs to the ocean. Okay, yeah. Yeah. if you look at deeds, I looked at a few here and there, like in the the thousands of of um, Ocean Boulevard, Northeast Lane, Beach Plum Way, right down to Two Ancient Highway. You'll see the the language that related to the town-owned property and and so on and so forth. Once you get south of Two Ancient Highway, the deeds reflect that they own um, to the ocean, which is essentially to the mean high mean tide, tide line, line or whatever. Well, so anyway, my point is is that, and I think Sun Valley is, is yet, you know, a, a different animal. So mm -hmm. my point in bringing all this up is I think we want to make sure that when we do that mailing, that we've, we've got the accurate information. Mm -hmm. right. and, and what I just said is what I believe to be Accurate. Um, the reason we haven't done it is because we want right. to make sure we have that information. Right. Okay. So what you're saying, and there's some properties along there, they own all the way to the water. Yes, correct. Yes. And the town doesn't own that little strip of sandy beach. And there right. are some exactly. along there. That's the case. Wow, well, yeah. I just thought we own it all. Okay. Uh, well, one of the problems, and well, I, I did. Uh, except what the state owns. One right. of the problems, if you, I don't know if you've looked at the um, town's GIS system online. Um, but essentially that, that's, you know, a mapping system yeah. and, and pictures or whatever. And that's actually inaccurate. And I think it's where most of my um, yeah. inaccurate perception came from. That literally gives you the impression that the town beach, um, you know, literally runs all the way to, to where the state beach is and then beyond or whatever. That's inaccurate. I've talked to the assessor. Assessor, he is now understands that or whatever. We do an annual update on the um, CAI GIS system mm -hmm. or whatever and he is going to fold that into that update such that the next revision, which is probably like nine months from now. So being you own the land all the way to the water, we can raise your taxes. Because <laughs> you own more land, it's more attractive. No? I mean, uh, that's a question for the assessor. <laughs> does, 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 does somebody pay more? I, would, I mean, I would yeah. just, I would just okay. to watch let's, that. Let's Go ahead. The, issue, the issue with that was the leased land from, from Joe Billy Brown Park yep. north was leased. Yep, right. Oh. And when, when they set that all up and decided that they were going to, the yep. town was going to deed that. They retained the rights. They, yes. They, sold, they could only sell what was stipulated in the deed, yep. and it was laid out in feet and inches. Yep. So the breakwaters became on town property still, and the house lot was behind it. Right. Mm. Right. Because when they, when those properties were leased, 
the original people built the breakwater because it was leased town land mm -hmm. to protect their property. And then, and then when the town meeting voted to allow the public or the lessor yep. to buy that piece of property, yep. they could only deed what was in the measurements. Uh -huh. And that cut the wall off on most all of those, or well, all of them. What, what I can tell you, Mike, is I, I didn't look at, at every property, but I looked at, at selected properties like on Beach Plum Way and H and Highway, and, and I think I looked at one on James as well, and you see I, that must have been leased land too because you see identical language mm -hmm. related yeah, to yeah, the yeah, town yeah. beach yeah. On, on those as well. Mm -hmm. So I suspect it was all part of the same There's a scheme. There's street in front of those houses at James and Shaw Street. Yep. The service, the water service is out there. Yep. yep. You get out there to work. Okay. <laughs> um, new business. We have one item under new business, um, Sherburn Drive drainage installation. Fred, do you want to go over that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is the result of a subdivision, which is Sherman Drive. It was completed a number of years ago. Uh, the town, in agreement with the developer, took a sum of money off the top of my head. Uh, let's see. Um, I think it was yes, $6,000. The lower $6,000. Uh, the way the system was designed, there are retention basins through the subdivision and some um, rain gardens through the subdivision. Mm -hmm. It's all wet in there. It is. It's, 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 it's oh, a yeah. little moist. It's all wet. Um, our concern was that at the, the, uh, um, the retention pond that's at the base of the subdivision, which borders Barber Road, mm -hmm. uh, should that happen to flood in the wintertime when it's frozen, the entrance to that, or the exit, the, re the, the, uh, the emergency drainage exit from that pond mm -hmm. floods directly across the street into someone's basement mm -hmm. because they're at the same elevation. Yeah. Uh, so we were concerned that's the way it was approved, but there needed to be some way to take the water away should that occur because otherwise we'd lose the road, they'd lose their home. Um, mm -hmm. So we requested and received money from the developer to build a drain system along the front of that area to alleviate that problem. And that's what this is going to do, basically. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Fred, why are we being asked to approve this? I mean, this is small stuff. No, this is just for your information. I just, this, since this is a construction project we're going to do in-house, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I thought it was advisable to advise the board what we're going to do so you know what we're going to do, mm -hmm. as opposed to, in hindsight, uh, just yeah. start doing the work and not have you know about it. Say, what the heck no, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with it. Do, yeah. do you need our approval because we're withdrawing the 6168? We, we do road? need your approval to close the road. That's the one approval we need. Can if, I ask a couple necessary. of questions when you're ready there, Mr. Chairman? Good. Are you ready now? Okay. Sure. I'm a little confused about a couple of things. Not that I need to know all these details, probably not, but <laughs> it says something about you're going to do... 125 feet of the overall 900 foot project. I don't quite follow that on my map. We have enough funds to do the area from Mill Road mm -hmm. down past Sherburn Drive Okay. Um, this year. And those are the funds that were given to us by the developer. That would, that would allow us to take into, there is a drainage dish that's, that needs to be excavated in there. It's now full. What about the rest of the blue line, Fred? Is yeah, that, that that will be constructed later. That's going to be a ditch oh. for now. Oh, okay. So we'll what pipe the driveways and so on and so forth and maintain them. So where does this 125 feet end on this map? Uh, the 125 feet is the portion that uh, the developer gave us money for. If you look at the corner, yeah, um, as you come in off of. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mill Road, that, that, that manhole, that first manhole right there, it's right on a property line. Okay. From there down to the uh, second manhole, which mm -hmm. is the next lot past Sherburn Drive. Yeah. That's the 125 feet. Yeah. The portion from um, Mill Road to that manhole is we have pipe for that in-house. We're going to do that in-house. Okay. Okay. And that will eventually alleviate some of the flooding on Mill Road. Um, well... Then the, the second phase of this, 
uh, again in house next year mm -hmm. will be to go to the next manhole and then down to the uh, uh, the grass treatment swale, which is next to the. Mm -hmm. So uh, to the grass treatment yeah. swale is the 900 feet then yeah, from Mill Road to yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. That's swale. correct. That's okay. the full length. Ah, okay. That was I was. We just can't do it all in one year. Okay, now so if we bring the water down from Mill Road down to about the entrance of Sherburn Road, where's the water going to go there in the temporary? It will go down an open ditch, and we'll be we'll be culvertizing the driveways mm -hmm. until we get that ditch filled in with pipe next yeah. year. Mm -hmm. And the ditch is along Barber Road. It's in the roadway, yes. Okay, and it'll dump into the thing just off to the right of our map that goes up to the pond north. Then that's correct. I got gotcha. you. Okay. okay. What, what do you need a motion for then, Fred? To close, close the road the during construction. Okay, I would make a motion to close uh, Barber Ave during construction Barbara of the road. drainage um, project. I'll second that. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Any other new business? Nope. Consent agenda. A couple of um, Hampton Cemetery deeds. First item. Second item, seed seafood festival sidewalk vendor licenses for the Coffee Can Cafe, 169 Ocean Boulevard, Bargain World, 235 Ocean Boulevard, and Shirts of Rust, 105 Ocean Boulevard. Um, I would make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Seconded second. by Mike Pierce. All in favor? Unanimous. Any closing comments? Yes, yeah. I do. And, and pardon me, Mary Louise. Uh, Mr. Moody has asked uh, me to extend and revise his remarks on Friday night. The Hampton Community Band will commence at 1800 or 6 p.m. And he had said 7. So again, on Friday evening, the Hampton Community Band will, will commence at 6 p.m. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any other closing comments? Yeah, I have a quick question because we've been provided um, with information from Diana Martin on recreation and parks on the information regarding the resident decal special program. You going to put this on the agenda for next week or whatever? What uh, we got I wasn't. Um, I wasn't planning on it. I'll tell you what my response was, and if you want to put it on the agenda, we can. Um, I, I thought we were going to authorize I, whatever. I, I just simply asked um, that we be brought, provided a copy of whatever the policies and procedures or whatever were. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I did. I looked at it and, and I basically said um, I'm not experienced enough to make judgments as to whether this you know, method of, of approving who is eligible and who isn't based on um, means testing or whatever. Right. So if if Michelle, what I said to Fred is, is if Michelle Kingsley, because she's in that kind of business, is comfortable, then I'm fine with it. Um, so we're talking about plowing people's driveways and stuff. No, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah. Not gonna do that. Yes. So <laughs> well, I know, but I just wanted to understand. I don't. What I don't. We're doing. I don't feel a need to have it put on the agenda. But if you do, I'd be happy. No, to I don't. Put it just, on. I just want to understand. I just wanted somebody with more knowledge than myself to look at it and say yeah. this kind of means test. I do have some five agencies right. and whatever. I do have something else you might want to consider yeah. talking about sometime, and I didn't know if I should bring it up tonight or not. But we've got a follow up on this, this school uh, SU 90 thing. Yep. Yeah. Why don't I was you thinking about bringing it up tonight. So okay. Let's. Can, before we adjourn, can I just suggest that, uh, means I'm on the cable thing and Louise was on there before, that we set up another meeting and we can see where it is and find out from Mark what we can, what the choices are. I will put it, that back to you Mike, guys. I will put it on a future agenda when it appears that there's information, um, you know, that makes you sense to discuss. Yeah, but don't you think we should have a meeting? No, I'm not for this board, but for the... Why don't you work out with Mary Louise? Okay. Um, you're the cable committee rep. She's been the rep to that committee. Okay, I'll do okay, that. I would like to make a motion to adjourn. I'll second At this. At 9.32. Seconded by Mike Pierce. All in favor? We're adjourned. Well. Um,
I'd like to uh, have a couple of words with sure. the town manager, please. Did, did I hear you say there's going to be a town food inspector? No, what I what you heard me say is that there are there are some people in the community who have suggested that. Okay, and, and you the may state, the state end up does, the state does have that function. They do they do perform that function. The state of New Hampshire yeah. does yeah. do that function now, isn't that correct? That's correct. Okay, and there, there's there's nobody that's a town employee no. or in leadership that's suggesting that. No. Okay, because I I certainly would be vehemently opposed to the, to that. As uh, as sure as I'm standing right here. Um, the jetty, I was down and watched them construct the jetty sign. I think that is, uh, um, oh, is, is great. Yeah, is it's it really there? nice. It's big and red. Right. Um, I was up in the White Mountains doing some ridge running this weekend. Uh, the White Mountains are some of the most dangerous mountains uh, in America. Uh, and they've got the mortality uh, statistics to back it up. But nobody closes the mountains when people um, get injured or uh, um, otherwise uh, get uh, worse than injured. And the, uh, the jetty was full of youngsters with their families out walking. I ran out to the end of the jetty. I think that sign is, uh, is a really wonderful sign. I think that covers our bases for being cautioned. I ran out to the end of the jetty. It did not say you can't run, so I felt that I could. <laughs> um, and uh, when the lifeguards are gone, I'll be swimming back in from it. But uh, um, I, I, I appreciate the attention. And it, it, is a, it is a nice tourist attraction. It really is. And it's, it's uh, in general, uh, used by safe people with their families, and they're very, very courteous, just as they are up in the mountains. And uh, to the uh, New Hampshire Parks Director, when you go up uh, uh, to the state, when you go up into the North Country, uh, they, they do a fabulous job up there with the huge numbers of people that go up there, not just down at this beach, and the state does a great job. Uh, the Aquarian, I see uh, Town Council in-house here tonight. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, and, and going through you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, you, Mr. Welch, uh, I'd like to share some time uh, as we get through the summer with Town Council on the Aquarian issue. And as you know, Fred, you and I went up there, and uh, there was some, some great testimony uh, by some of the commissioners, and uh, it, would, it was unanswered by Aquarian. Aquarian's a great company, they have great water, but I think there's room for improvement and for us to get more on board and closer to Aquarian to address some of our needs as they take rate. Um, the 2015 health care, uh, I think that that's interesting that that's being pushed back. I think the chairman has good points on uh, some, uh, some caution in new hiring as that goes to 2015. Interestingly enough, uh, the Hampton Union's parent uh, company, the Wall Street Journal, uh, reported today that Congress has exempted themselves or will soon exempt themselves from that, that, uh, that burden. And uh, of course, they're special. And uh, they're concerned about the brain drain if they have to have the insurance that we have. But uh, we need to be aware of that here in this town as we go forward because that, that is expensive and that does involve part-timers. And we have to watch that. I'm especially proud of how the uh, Hampton Police Department utilizes part-time employees for their surge in the summer, and uh, they do a magnificent job. They really do. The chief, the uh, deputy chief, is Captain's lieutenant, and I think that's that's a real great model. Going to the fire and the uh, the articles in the paper, there's some uh, uh, disconnect uh, between the business owner and the fire department. I'm on the website right now. There's no place to go uh, to access the attachments that you will need. There's no place to, to, to link up an email, the, the code. This has to come into the 20th century. The chief is building, not the chief, but the chief is responsible right now with two fire stations going on. Uh, he's got full-time operational intensity in the summer. It is a fire department. And uh, this, this code enforcement, I do, I do believe it needs to be beefed up. And I will uh, echo Chairman Nichols' concerns about that full time, and I think the way to go in, in, in mirroring the police department is to look at perhaps two part-time folks and not pay that that onerous uh, health insurance benefit uh, for one person. That, and uh, this is more or less a seasonal uh, issue. People do not open up in January. They don't open up in December. They don't open up, they open up in the summer. And if we have folks that are geared up for that in a part-time basis, uh, I think that is the way to go. I think the website and any platform in the private sector today, whether it's risk management or law, you go to the website, you peel off the attachments, you fill out the attachments, you email them back, and nobody's waiting for phone calls back. 
state time stamp to the email, you'll get a second request for the email. If you're opening up a lounge, if you're opening up in a restaurant, if it's, if it's a reconstruction, if it's a remodel, and then if you don't have the proper attachments, you get an email back, no, here, you need this attachment filled out as well. It shoots up to Concord, to the state to get their approval, and there's none of this, and I've heard this up and down the strip from a lot of people, and this is a two-sided issue, because uh, code enforcement is understaffed. Uh, is that we need to get up on, on the website and we need these attachments and we, we have to move past the stone age yeah. where we're waiting for phone calls and we're on hold because it doesn't go on in the private sector. Yeah. It just doesn't. So we have, we have a whole huge room for improvement on that and that's embracing technology and coming into the 21st century on it. And uh, I think that wraps up my responses to your report. Great report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just I'd like to comment on one of your items. Um, don't be offended if you're out on the jetty and I just wave to you from here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to stick my nose in here for a second on the jetty. We have the potential, once again, and we've already had two instances this year of risking the lives of our first responders in an area that they really shouldn't have to be working in. And there may not be anybody doing anything exciting in the mountains in New Hampshire, but they're spending a heck of a lot of time up in Maine looking for that woman who's missing, who was hiking the Appalachian Trail or whatever by herself. There are dangers in a lot of these areas, and I would like at least locally to mitigate what we can and keep... Uh, I don't know. I guess the insurance business, Phil, would call it an attractive nuisance. Okay. He's ignoring me. That's all right. Old business. First item under old business is appointment of a volunteer to the SB 163 commission, also known as the Coastal Risks and Hazards. Um, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, put it out there. We've had two um, individuals respond expressing an interest. Um, one is uh, Jay Diener. Um, the other is uh, David Wood of 4 um, Ruth Lane in, in Hampton. Um, would somebody like to make a motion um, related to the appointment? I would be, uh, I would go ahead and move Mr. Wood. Jay Dean has done a wonderful job of conservation and he's, he's done admirable work volunteering. I think it would be nice to get another, give another individual an opportunity. Uh, and he certainly looks like he has, uh, you know, credentials and, and I would be uh, willing to uh, to give him a, a try. So I will so move that we appoint uh, David Wood of Four Ruth Lane as the volunteer to represent Hampton on the New Hampshire Coastal Risk and Hazard Commission. Um, I'm not hearing a second. I would comment. Um, but is there a second I to the motion so it can I'll be discussed? I'll second it. Discussion. Um, I, you know, I'm not going to vote for Mr. Wood, nothing against Mr. Wood whatsoever, but Jay Diener, um, in addition to um, being the Conservation Commission Chairman, has been actively involved um, with a number of other entities associated with the uh, coastal um, sea level rise. Um, matter of fact, I've had probably 10 or conversations with Jay over the last couple of years um, on the um, subject um, so that's that's my feeling any further discussion I was just looking at the emails mr. chairman and uh, I I know Jay Dina really well <coughs> and I know he's involved with the conservation committee and he's also involved with some other things as you pointed out on the uh, the flip side of that is <coughs> Um, I tend to um, see a different point that possibly it might be good to bring in some new uh, personalities into the mix uh, because Jay's, I like Jay real well and I, I'm not saying anything bad about Jay, period. Just saying that, you know, um, he's involved with quite a few things here and I think that um, he's involved with that. He says he's the president of the newly formed Seabrook Hamptons Estuary Alliance. He's the chairman of the Hampton Conservation Committee, and he's been involved with a lot of things. And I really appreciate all of his efforts. But this uh, having Mr. Uh, Wood 
come in. We'll get some new blood into that uh, little circuit. I, I think there's some reason I think that that might be a good idea to support Mr. Wood. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? I will abstain. 401 with myself abstaining. Okay. Next issue is something we discussed several weeks ago. Mark's been looking into along with Fred. Mark, did you want to um, address the uh, no through trucking issue? Yeah, the uh, impetus. employees health insurance that we were concerned about um, the sidewalk maintenance issues are going to be before the board on uh, this month on the 16th for your regular meeting and the winter maintenance plan will be before the board on the 23rd this month uh, for your review uh, we also uh, have completed I think the access to the, the south jetty at least DR uh, dread has, has, has completed it on, on 8-5 with their announcement and press release, my understanding is they're not going to block it off. They're just going to put the sign up. Do you have any time frame on the signs? I don't, uh, nor do we have the description on the sign uh, as of yet. But I understand they, they have prepared them and they're going to put them up soon. So any penalties stipulated on the sign? There are no penalties in the dread regulations for anything on the beach. Uh, their administrative regulations contain no penalties. The, the sign does not prohibit people right. from going on the jetty. It simply warns them of the dangers. It's advisory. So you couldn't have penalties without a, right. a prohibition. Right. And they don't have uh, any penalties in their regulations, so it would take 18 months to two years to get those regulations changed. So it would be quite a long period of time before we could see any of those. I don't know if you want to... Um, have us send another letter to Dredd regarding that and fencing off, or we want to leave it that way for now? I mean, I think it's a step in the right direction. I personally would have preferred that it be, you know, blocked off and, yeah. and you know, whatever. Um, one of the things that you saw the email <coughs> I sent to the chief, but one of the things that, that bothered me about it is, is all, you know, state parks have risks associated with them. When you go in the water, you're risking, you know, rip tides. When you go rock climbing, you're risking things, but the thing that bothers me about the jetty, and I'd certainly prefer to, to see it blocked off, is, is simply that's not part of the mission critical attraction of Hampton Beach. Right, it's, right. it's the beach, it's not the jetty, but I, 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 my suggestion would be that we take it a, a step at a time and just make an inquiry as to, you know, when they anticipate having that up and we'd appreciate it sooner rather than later. I'd be happy to do that by email if you like. Sure. Okay. Yeah, That's it, sir. Okay. Uh, questions for Fred? Um, yes, Fred. Yes, ma'am. The, the asphalt that was reported in the ocean that you um, surmise might have been from the breakage of the town's seawall, have we managed to find it? or? My understanding is that they, they cleaned up what they could find. Oh. Asphalt or concrete? No, it was asphalt. Asphalt. Asphalt There's a big the pile of it. Well, behind the wall, the uh, when we had that last storm, right, right. Uh, it broke that asphalt up back about three or four feet from the wall, mm -hmm. and somehow it got out. I think it went underneath the wall, but because if we had a large sunk hole in there, mm. and yeah. ended up on the on the some of it ended up in the beach. Hold I think the rest there. of it's buried. Yeah. Uh, but we we cleaned up what we could find that actually some was in the water. Some of the beach goes unless somebody threw it over. Yeah, no, I, I low tide. I'm just and I had a complaint. I, I, I was trying yeah. to figure out how asphalt. Yeah, whatever. Well, it, was from that, it was from the parking in the side of that yes. area that's all paved on the other side of the wall, Richard. I got the complaint, you know, from a, an individual who's up there and mm -hmm. called Fred. Okay, mm -hmm. anything else? Or? Um, no. Um, I have a couple, Fred. Um, what became of the um, Lane Library August 7th uh, event where we didn't oh, approve the um, closing off of the Academy Ave? Uh, they decided not to go to the school. Uh, as of this morning, we were going to place a request for a, uh, their amended request for a assembly permit before the board tonight uh, to go to the uh, Children's Activity Center over off of Stickney Court. Uh, but that is also not going to happen, so they're actually going to have it in the library. Oh. 
they, okay. they run out of places to go, basically. Okay. Um, second question is, I'd appreciate it if you would um, make a few comments relative to some of the concerns related to the timeliness of, of um, fire inspections. It's been publicized in the paper. There was the email sequence that went back and forth a couple of weeks ago, and, and just your take on the issue and, and what you see as the short and long-term plans to uh, deal with it. Uh, actually, I've talked to both the chief and the building inspector on that matter, and I think everybody in town has read the article at one point in time or another, so they're kind of familiar with, with the general background of the fact that uh, something didn't happen. <coughs> and I, it, it, Unfortunately, that something that did not happen was the result, I think, of a miscommunication. There was a provision within the building permit uh, that said that work done outside the, 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 that permitted would, would cause the operation to be shut down. And um, it was vague enough to cause the applicant not to conduct the work. But the applicant did not call the building department to, to inquire as to, as to what. Um, I know the building inspector has talked to the applicant several times. I know that the fire department has talked to the applicant several times. They seem to be in harmony at this point. Uh, there are no outstanding permits. There are no outstanding issues. Uh, I am going to meet with the applicant tomorrow sometime during the day, subject to call, uh, probably in the afternoon. He's indicated he'd probably come in the afternoon. He's, he's flown up from Florida for other matters. Um, and, and we'll be able to sit down and have some discussions. Uh, one of the things I think that's, that's uh, and I know the board is going to address this as we go through the budget process, one of the things that's interesting is that uh, we're receiving record numbers of permits, both in the fire department and the building department. And um, they're stripping to some degree our capability to keep up with them from inspection standpoints and, and to do the work. Uh, the fire chief has submitted in the budget a request to put the second inspector back on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I have not taken it out of the budget because I think the board has to discuss this mm -hmm. to determine what should really be done in that area. Uh, I know that you're going to get a potential request um, for inspection matters for health inspections uh, for food <coughs> because there, there, there are a group of people in the community who have expressed interest off and on during the past year to hire an inspector strictly for food inspection, mm -hmm. inspecting restaurants, issuing licenses. What the state does now, um, and that's something that may come to you for exploration. And charging a fee. <coughs> well, the fee would have to take up our total cost. I mean, there's just no way of doing this without taking up our right. total cost. Uh, as far as the, the fire inspection matters are concerned, uh, the chief has told me that we really do need the second inspector back. Uh, if we're going to continue to have the types of inspections that we're doing now, uh, we did look at the opportunity to perhaps put on a part-time inspector who worked for the fire department before, but those people are all pensioned. They will oh, yeah. lose their pensions. Yeah. So that's sort of out the window at yeah. this point in time. Yeah. Um, We'll have to address that issue, but I, I think right now we're, we're back to ground zero and we're standing on firm ground. There are inspections that are going to be delayed uh, simply because something's not finished or something isn't scheduled. Uh, and, and I know that we had talked about the inspections uh, at another building that's being built down the beach. Uh, it turns out that, at least from the commercial component of those buildings, uh, that matter was handed over to the new owner of the commercial enterprises. So the, the, uh, the developer was not responsible for that. It was in the paperwork that was exchanged, mm -hmm. and we've straightened that out. So that's, that's been taken care of. Uh, we, as soon as we found out about that, we, we took care of that within two days. The inspections were done, and the places were allowed to open. So um, we are keeping track of every inspection and every, uh, every application, uh, the time it takes for the inspections, when the notices are received, and there is a, a lengthy uh, 20 or 30 page report on the inspections that are currently ongoing and I think some of you have seen that report oh, yeah. uh, during the past year. So we're keeping track of those on a daily basis to make mm -hmm. sure that we have uh, answers to questions about what's going on. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I think people should understand that when they call the fire department regarding inspections, the number, if you call the inspector's number, that's uh, being forwarded automatically to the clerk. There's no cell phone, uh, there's no uh, answering phone right. on his telephone anymore. It goes automatically to the clerk for answer. 
Uh, she's not there. It is on a recorder on her desk, and she answers it that day or the following day. If she's not, and it comes in after, after hours, for instance. So we're tracking every one of those as well to try to make sure that mm. nothing falls between the cracks. Yeah. Okay, Hopefully so that's going to work temporarily. If I can just quickly summarize. Number one, I would appreciate it if, if um, you would let me know when that meeting is tomorrow yes. with, yep. with um, Terry. I'd like to yes. attend that. Um, the second is I think I heard you say that we're essentially caught up at this point. That's my understanding. Okay. But, but that, that you and the fire chief believe that there is a necessity to fill the fire inspection mm -hmm. position in relation to next year's budget. Yes. Um, one thing I do know is, is if we do that, it's basically $100,000. Unfortunately. By the time you get done with benefits. And I would really like to say, and I won't go into a lot of detail because I've had this conversation with both Fred and the fire chief, I'd really like to see the metrics that, that lay out the increase in the level of mm -hmm. workload in that department, perhaps comparing what went on in 2000, whatever, a few years going back anyway, 2011, 2012, what we're experiencing um, this year. And, and the second thing that, that I would like to see us do is, is make sure we're looking long and hard um, at alternatives, okay, to, to providing additional resource. I mean, let, let's face it, the, uh, I'm far from an expert on it, but I do know that the, the, the nature of the job of the fire service has changed over 20 or 30 oh, yeah. years. I, I think there was a lot more time spent fighting fires 20 or 30 years ago than there is today. There's probably a lot more time I'm sure on, on um, EMS ambulance mm -hmm. type stuff than there was you know back then. But to some extent, um, that the nature of, of, of the beast is is you have to have people that are available. We have anywhere from seven to nine people available on any given shift. Okay, you have to have people that are available should there be a fire that you have to respond to. And I just like to be sure that we we look into you know, recognizing that it could involve education, it could involve, you know, buy-in from the unions or whatever, that we look at, at, at what the alternatives might be um, in conjunction with leading up to the chief's request in September or when he, whenever he comes in for his. So I, I just kind of want to give you, I'd rather let you know where I'm coming from now rather than, you know, surprise you with, with my questions at, at the September meeting. So He and I have talked about many of those points, okay. so I know he's getting okay. prepared for those. Okay, I have a couple of questions. Um, one of the things that concerned me from what I could see about this thing with the inspections was it seemed like to me, without knowing any of the details, it was a lack of getting back to the customer. Mm -hmm. We've got to make sure that, is, you know, even if we, even if we can't do anything for 50 days, we've got to call and say, we'll get to you, if nothing else. And they are taking care of that. Okay. And then the other thing that I was going to ask is, it seems like to me in the spring, every spring right before the beach season opens, everybody wants to open their business June 1st, oh, yeah. and they put in a request the last day of May. Right. Well, I don't know how to say this, but there's got to be a little bit of foresight on the customer's part. Mm -hmm. We can't do handstands in a day. I mean, and I, I, I don't know if everybody's aware of the fact if you're going to do electrical inspection or a fire inspection or any kind of inspection, you have to have a person who knows what he's doing. He has to have the time to do it. And during that time of the year, we're going to be busy. Mm -hmm. So I think that we've got to make sure that the information is put out there. If you want an inspection of any kind, be thinking about it before the last minute, however you want to convey that. Because I think that's important because everybody knows they all come up from Massachusetts I'm not using this example it seems like they all come up from someplace and then they want to open as soon as they walk in the door when they just jump out of the cars it isn't going to happen I can tell you that we require 48 hours notice to do an yeah. inspection okay. right. uh, it's done on a first come first serve basis so if the entire day is booked you're going to wait to book into the next day okay. and we do those as quickly as we can because we understand that holding someone up from opening business is a bad business. Yeah. And That's true, but on the, the flip side is they know they're going to open business oh yeah. probably when they ended the business from the previous summer. Yes. I mean, that isn't rocket scientist unless I'm confused about the issue. So I Looking think at improving the website so people have that information. Yeah. Uh, Plan ahead, get your building request, whatever, in, in, on, so we, in a timely fashion. We can do them in April or March, whatever. I've, I've 
thought about and and, and I chief and I have generally talked about a few of these conditions about when they close up giving them a notice mm -hmm. this is what you yeah. need to do in the spring mm -hmm. Good please idea. get to us as soon as possible mm -hmm. so that we can schedule you at a convenient time for both parties that's a good idea mm -hmm. so I like that, that try, just trying to get things oriented so yeah, people right. have the information they need to get it done and get it done quickly exactly I like that Fred and that notice will get lost in the round file about 24 hours later at least we've tried um, <laughs> can't, okay. I can't help that <laughs> okay all business and other okay approval of minutes July 22nd. So move that we adopt the minutes of July 22. Can I ask a question? 2013. Um, one thing that you've been doing this yes. year is, is before we even discuss the minutes, adopting, uh, making a motion to adopt them. That's why how you make a motion so people can, can I discuss finish? it. Can yeah. I finish? Okay. Um, however, we're amending the minutes as we go through. Yes. So it would seem to me that we should be. Um, adopting the, the minutes as amended as opposed to just simply adopting the minutes. Well, that's all right. You're amending during the discussion, and then when you're finished the amending during the discussion, we vote, and then the minutes as amended are... But I, I think what we're not doing is, is there's nothing in a motion that's accepting the amendments. But I don't know if there are going to be any amendments when I make the motion, but as our discussion... Why don't we make the motion after we go through? Well, well that, why that's are you discussing something without moving it forward? Aren't you, you gotta, trying you to put it on the table. aren't you trying to move something to put it on the table so you can talk about I it? I don't think it's written anywhere you have to make a motion before or after necessarily. You can do it whenever you want to. I, I just, um, my, I my reason for, for bringing it up is, is mm -hmm. it's a change, and I don't see how the change addresses the issue of accepting the amendments that have been proposed by individual people. That's my point. Well, once you vote to make the changes, then you have set the changes in place, and then you are free to vote yes or no on the okay. motion. Okay. I, I will, like changes, at, at the end of this, I will make another motion then to accept the amendments. Uh, so as amended. As amended. Yeah. Yep. Okay, page one. Page two. Page two. Yes. Um, third paragraph down. Board members Pierce, Woolsey, and Nichols discussed the following with Mr. Schwotzer, asked about money that has still not been cashed. No, that's the LGC check yeah. that had not. We were wondering whether or not that had been cashed. To the best of my recollection, he had just been holding it. Yes, the And LGC then um, distribution correct. process has been agreed upon by the unions. BSR is the Bureau of, it's the Bureau of Securities Regulation, plural. On page mm -hmm. two, second paragraph down, third line, it says dealing with first half of 2011, which almost implies like the first six months, it was actually 50% of the 2011 credit. Uh, fourth line down has the word accepted, E-X-C-E-P-T-E-D. -E oh, yes. <laughs> it's accepted, A-C-C. -C. Oh, yeah. Um, the one, two, three, fourth paragraph down, um, I would add a sentence to that, the, the, the paragraph that basically says, it, it talks about Mike Schwotzer, and he said he would recommend booking the, the money to revenue and explained why. I believe that we had a consensus um, at that discussion to book it to revenue. Yeah. So I would just add um, there was a consensus by the board to post the town portion, not the employee portion, obviously, as revenue. Right. Page three. Page four, page five, I would just add on um, about the twelfth line down or so, it says concerns with the number of 6.9 million, I would just add to that being too high. That was what the concern was. Page six. Yeah, on page six, on the first paragraph, at the very end of the first paragraph, it says, Violate the purchasing poly policy, and this is time number five. I think we can just leave the word out, the word time out. Time doesn't seem to add anything to the pizzazz of that paragraph, because I don't remember saying time. Anyway, uh, that's all I have on page six. Okay. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, paragraph six. Selectman Woolsey provided her 
should be per. <laughs> Page seven. Yes, on the page seven, I'm they're t talking about the, the Thresher Memorial, and it uh, <clears throat> they have a listed four crew members. The correct um, number there is three, yeah. and there were three from Northampton too. But I don't know if we need to have those in the minutes. But I did say that also, and further down it goes into the same thing. Uh, that's about the middle of the page. It says three Hampton, four Hampton residents should be three again. That's all I'm for me. Okay, and uh, page seven, page eight. I guess if we're going to cover the amendments now, we need an amendment to the motion, because. Why we've just discussed the amendments. We've discussed the whole minutes. Because and you we don't have made know. Some corrections boy, I, I don't want to. I don't want to get into a barn burner on this, but we don't. When at the time you made your motion, the amendments. Are unknown. How can you vote to but approve something? Can I finish? Can I finish? How, how can you vote to approve something when you don't know what it is? We don't know That's what the amendments. That's why you discuss it. Okay. And uh, the final product of the discussion is incorporated into the vote. I would think the motion would have to include the amendments it that were proposed. It was wrong on my motion. You can do what? Okay. I would make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I'll second that. All in favor? Opposed? I'm going to abstain. Abstain. Fine. Okay. July 29th, non-public minutes. I would make a motion to approve them. <laughs> I'll second that. All in favor? Opposed? I'm going to abstain. Abstain. Okay. Two vote in the affirmative? Yes, sir. 401 with Mary Louise abstaining. Okay, town manager's report, Fred. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the State Department of Resources and Economic Development has issued a press release indicating that they will place a sign at the Hampton Beach jetty advising people of the danger of walking on the jetty. Wow. 20 uh, years too late, 30 no. years. Interesting response to a prior problem. Yes. The Aquarium Water Company has filed for an additional rate increase for Hampton residents. <laughs> <laughs> designed to recover their costs to prepare and present their case uh, that was just granted general uh, for general and, and wicker rate increases I believe that uh, something is something in the area of forty to fifty thousand dollars additional rate increase for residents in the town um, work underway on the beach um, located at 968 Ocean Boulevard is expected to be completed this Tuesday that's tomorrow night uh, from the best information that we have, just so everybody what? knows that that's the breakwater that's being completed down opposite uh, uh, Smith. Is it Smith? A uh, little bit, a uh, little bit north of Cusick. Yeah, yeah. Little, yeah. Oh. Uh, that work is scheduled to be completed tomorrow evening. So people have been asking, what's happening? When is it going to end? And, and it's, it, we're being advised that it's going to end on Tuesday evening. So, just so people know. Uh, the punch list for the wastewater treatment plant dewatering project is finalized and the punch list in, is in final preparation for the closing out of the project. It appears that that is limited uh, to patching the trench and that uh, patching should be completed shortly. The contractor on the Church Street pump station is com has completed the pour of concrete to bring the structure up to three feet below grade, which is a substantial yeah. amount of concrete. So work progresses well and is on budget. So they're figuring that if the water pushes it up, they've got a three feet leeway there to get it to ground well. level? <laughs> well, I they, think they've so. got enough density in that material that that concrete's not coming out of the Fuck ground. That's cold. pretty thick stuff. So I, it's it's uh, it's heavy mix. Down so down. yeah, the, the slump is just, slump I'm glad I'm not the guy who had to work with the slump. So it's <laughs> still uh, three feet there well, as the ocean rises. Well, that's, that three feet is where the cap is going to go for the building to start up. Oh. So it's going to be, can I, that's, that's, that's the, all. That's the base for the foundation. Right. That's all uh, already steeled and, and the rebuys in it and, and, and welded together. And but they're out of the water. They're out of the water. <laughs> and that's, boy, they certainly like that idea. Uh, we have verified that the federal health insurance penalties have been postponed until 2015. Just so people know, uh, there were a lot. Of, there was a lot of conflicting stories going on about that material, mm -hmm. and uh, we have 
gone to a number of sources and every single one of them has come back to us with a confirmation that it will be 2015 before those penalties go into effect. So we're very satisfied with that. I also received a communication today from the chairman of the Municipal Budget Committee. They have a vacancy, one seat to fill. Um, anyone interested in serving that committee should contact Chairman Latimer or send a message to the town manager's office before February, Friday, February, uh, excuse me, February, September 6th. <laughs> uh, I want to wish the, word, the, the, the year away too quickly here. Uh, the seat will be appointed uh, by vote of the Budget Committee on September 17th of the next regular meeting. The appointment period is from 9-17-2013 to 3-11-2014. And again, you can call Ch uh, Chairman Latimer at 603-926-2005 uh, uh, or you can contact the Town Manager's Office to leave your name and interest at 929-5908. Um, just a couple of things, Mr. Chairman, we have, I, I already covered one of them, that's the part-time employees health insurance that we were concerned about. Yeah. It's in the uh, community calendar, Mike. I have nothing, thank you. Bill? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to say I'm really excited about uh, the 375th birthday of one of the greatest towns in the greatest state in the greatest country in the world. And uh, oftentimes, despite the effervescent and stimulating and highly intellectual conversation that, that transpires at the board, <laughs> I will be looking at, at uh, town reports that go back hundreds and hundreds of years. And there were some remarkable people that have lived in this town and built this town going back to 1638. And those that lived here before uh, it was incorporated. And they didn't live the lives that we did. They didn't live the, uh, the luxury that uh, even the most impoverished of us do. Uh, and uh, it, it really strikes a, a, a chord in your heart and your soul to know what great people have lived in this town. And in the middle of summer, for the town to recognize that is fabulous, for the governor to come down, uh, for senators or whoever comes down. But to uh, participate in that, our family at our, our family home is going to have a party. Uh, it's, of course, it butts what is now wetlands but used to be part of the, the top and farm and the march down to the cemetery and back of the churches. And it's a very exciting weekend and I know that uh, a lot of people have worked hard and there's experience Hampton, there's the Hampton Village, uh, the Hampton Beach, the, uh, the precinct down there, the selectmen, those that uh, started this, this project and those that have carried the ball. And it's going to be an exciting weekend. I look forward to seeing everybody out there. Thank you. Okay, Mike, I've all set. Mary Louise? Yes, for those of you who have been watching Channel 22, and even if you don't watch Channel 22, please tune in. The Public Works Director has obtained some films from the state of New Hampshire on dams. And we're going to have a big decision to make in this town fairly soon on the dam at the old grist mill. And the <coughs> films show dam um, reclamation or projects in, different, in Washington State and in Wisconsin and in all different states showing you what can be done when dams are removed and it gives you a whole uh, uh, an overview of what can happen in communities so I think that would be very valuable I was delighted to see that uh, on channel 22 and I I don't know the times it's random but you'll be very educated I think if you take time to watch that excellent idea okay I have nothing Next item on the agenda is an appointment with the uh, Hampton Cemetery trustees regarding a couple of proposed cemetery-related warrant articles. You guys want to uh, come up to the table? You guys are old outfit here. Wow. Six no fooling around there. Okay, um, to get things started, I'll just turn this uh, right over to Fred to give a little bit of the background information <coughs> as to why we invited you um, tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think <coughs> probably just I just go back and recant what we uh, had explored and, and what we suggest the solution to the problem is. Um, the commission sells cemetery lots to various residents of the community as they need them and. Uh, as that occurs, a deed is prepared and the funds that pays for the cemetery lot comes into the town hall, goes to the finance department. Uh, the funds are then put into the general fund because they're received as, uh, under the, the state statutory criteria of sale of town property, which is in essence what they are. 
Uh, the deed is in process through the Board of Select. In fact, we have a couple to do this evening under uh, the consent agenda. At the end of the year, if the board <coughs> feels so disposed, what happens is we add up the sale of all those cemetery <coughs> lots and come up with a figure. If the board is disposed, then we write a warrant article to have those funds transferred to the town trustees and put into investment sometime during the following year after town meeting votes it. Uh, one of the things that, that concerned me, and I know concerned some of the others as we were talking about it, was the fact that this process can take as long as two years, depending mm -hmm. on when the lot was sold. Yeah. And that's a long time for that money to wait to go into investment start earning interest. So when I started looking at this, I started looking at the statutes. And uh, as, as you know, uh, Chapter 287 of the statutes governs the control of cemeteries in cities and towns. And the thing that stuck out like a sore thumb was the fact that there's no process for those funds to come back to the cemetery at all, which I think is wrong, basically. So what I did is I drafted with the assistance of town council two acts, one a, uh, a general enabling act for the state and the other one a special enabling act only for Hampton. And what it does is basically when that those funds come into the, the finance department. And instead of sitting here and going in the general fund, if these laws were to be passed and town meeting approved it, those funds would go directly to town trustees without waiting. And they'd start earning interest then, as opposed to two years later. And I think that's important from the standpoint of you're going to have more funds, they're going to earn interest earlier, and the fund is going to grow uh, so that you can do more things in the cemetery as time passes. Not the net shell is, is what this is all about. It would be nice. <laughs> you change. Yeah. I think Comments the, or? the only question I had was um, when I read through the uh, the act, an act, it uh, has an and or or it would be uh, deposited in either the general fund or as sale of town property or directly deposited into the town trustees of trust funds. Why do we have to have both of those in there? Why, why wouldn't it just be uh, directly deposited to the trust? It's up to town meeting. It's up to town meeting. We don't dictate that. Uh, in order to allow the act to be accepted, it has to go through the town meeting process. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, um, it's a general act and, well, it would be in the general act too. The town meeting would have to, an uh, annual or special town meeting would have to approve the fact that you're doing this. And there has to be a mechanism under which it could be uh, rescinded because we have no way of knowing what the legislature is going to do 50 years from now. Yeah, um, this year. <laughs> there's a safeguard there so the town meeting can do something else with it if they need to. But without that, there's no way to in fact do anything without going back to legislature and going through the whole process all over again. So. The this intention would be either to put in the it general fund or directly deposited to the trustees right. of the trust fund. The town why, meeting. Why wouldn't you have just put directly deposited to the trustees because of the trust Because the current fund. statute requires it to go to the general fund. Okay. So right. the town meeting would have to change that process. And, and this in itself, um, the, the state level legislation doesn't do anything without a subsequent right. town. We still do it now. We do it now. And, you know. Right. I mean, what happens if the town votes, you know, it's never happened since I've been, I've been 17 or 18 years on this thing. We've never voted against that. I don't think you ever will. I've never seen a town do that. You know, what, what is the alternative if that happens? Well, the fund stays in the general fund of the town. Yeah. Well, actually, actually, last year, the thing that prompted Fred on this is last year there was no warrant article. Right. So the money just basically stayed in the general mm -hmm. fund right. and didn't get transferred to the cemetery. And so... You know, we, we looked at that, and then Fred came up with the time frame. I have a question, Fred. I understand sure. on the time frames, the 15 months to 24 months or whatever, I can see, like, for example, let's take 2013. We saw a cemetery lot in January of 2013. Town meeting doesn't approve the transfer until March of 2014, right. okay? And then presumably in April, you could move it from the general fund in the cemetery. So I can see the 15-month time frame as the long end, but how does it get to 24? Well, it depends on when the town wants to move it. Usually we move it uh, as we receive the new tax bills in, which is in June, because that money's 
we're we're running on the school okay. department's okay. operation okay. until okay. June. Okay. So okay. Uh, we move it in June if we can. If somebody forgets, it gets done in December when the second tax bill comes in. So it could be as long as 24 months. Now, in order to enact this, this has to go to the state, and now it has to be. So how long? This is for 2014. Yes. This won't be acted on until next year. That's correct. And then it takes 90 days or something like that afterwards. Well, yeah. they, they can be effective upon passage right. or whatever. But I think that in terms of Hampton, even if you know one of these two pieces of legislation passed, it wouldn't impact, impact Hampton until we had a subsequent ordinance in 2015. That's correct. correct. How many of you have to approve it? So, so the only thing when I looked at this, I know generally it's between 15 and 20 thousand dollars a year yeah. that we're talking about here, yeah. and. When I turned on the meeting, when you had the uh, trustee of the trust fund, um, Mr. Silverdeck, in here, he spoke that I think it was 2.75 percent we were earning on that fund, something in that area. So three yeah. percent at twenty thousand dollars. We're talking about six hundred dollars of interest, basically on all this money. You know, and it just seemed to me when I first saw this that it was a lot of work. You know, but I understand that this money's hanging out there, but right. it's kind of like getting paid every other week to me you know you still get all your money every other week but I, I understand you know in the future here we could be getting seven or eight percent interest in this it's month. possible so it could make a big difference but yeah but I think know. one of the beauties of this is that it's automatic we don't have to have a a warrant every year and that would take one more thing off of the yeah, yeah. Warrant yeah. Off. yeah. Is that less, one less thing for us to fuss about right. these are just some of the questions that we would you know, wondering about on that part of it, you know. I well, doing it automatically, which I think is the right way to do it. It just gets it done. Nobody worries about it at that point. It's mm -hmm. done automatically. The money will stay just like, I mean, like it's, gonna, it does now. it's just going to go right into the fund. Right. It exactly. Fred, Fred, do you have a, I mean, I, I see the two options. The second one has options in terms of where the money goes, whereas the, the second one is Hampton specific and it's also specific that it goes directly into the cemetery lots. Do you recommend one versus the other? Uh, the legislature usually prefers a, a general enabling act. Mm -hmm. And as you know, some of the acts that we've submitted the last couple of years, they've changed those to general enabling acts. Mm -hmm. The one for the cemetery funds for Hampton only probably would require a town meeting warrant article to submit it under home rule. Mm -hmm. Or wording in the article that would say if the legislature passes it, it has to be approved by the town meeting. It, it can work either way. So you're suggesting the first the first one? Though. The General Enabling Act, because right. I think the legislature would approve it better. And we probably get a lot more support from other cities and towns, because they can't do this either. Uh, how do you feel about us going forward? I mean, as long as it goes into the trust, fund, you know, I think the only, uh, I, you know, I mean, I would, that would, I would feel comfortable with that as long as it's going into the trust fund right. and that money's doing yep. that. I mean, I'd hate to see it go somewhere else. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's why that general yeah. fund in there. I didn't want to see all this stuff yep. getting shoveled off into something else. That's yeah. that where that it goes by an now. When we come around to the following year, you know, with a warrant article, I personally agree with with what you just said, and the desire to see it go elsewhere. No, we, we don't really get into unless we really need something in that money. But you know what? Um, I know when I turned on the meeting that when you had. Mr. Silverdeck in here, the, um, you know, there was talk about the fund and what things, you know, and what was going to happen with that, and, <coughs> and there was some talk about, you know, how, if you're ever going to have to buy land, you know, for the cemetery and that, and, you know, we talked about it at our last meeting and that, and, you know, I don't think we're ever going to have to buy land because it's okay. people, people that was my question, is there like... And, and everything's getting smaller down. Maybe someday you'll have to build like a mausoleum or mm -hmm. somebody will build a mausoleum somewhere. I think in the future, mm -hmm. that's what it's going it's to be all it's about. But, but it sounds like right now it, it, it looks like the land is going to support. I mean, unless there's a, you know, definitely. A, a horrific disaster and it's not going <laughs> to affect any of I mean, none of us here will ever, you know, and, and our kids will never see the end of that summer. For what it's worth, what kind of indirectly relates to it, which I mentioned this to a couple of people last couple of days have been surprised, but the 2000, if you compare the 2000 and the 2010 census of Hampton, it literally only increased by 50 or 60 people. I, I mean, virtually, I mean, whatever, 0.1 or 0.2 percent, which um, as opposed to if you were to compare the census, census, for example, from 1990 to 2000, there was some, I don't remember the numbers, but there was some very substantial um, increases in population. So. Um, is the board in sync in terms of this first of the two articles? I have or questions. I assume you are going to let us address it. Sure. Um, 
are are we fairly comfortable with instead of the Hampton specific um, suggestion to go with the generic suggestion? From what Fred said, it sounded like the it sounds like the generic the one ad adapting the state statute to cover any town who wants to do it would be sensible. Is that your? That's okay. what they've been basically yeah. doing. We submitted a couple of bills last year that was specific to Hampton, yeah. and they changed them to be general enabling acts. So oh. yeah, well. they kind of give you a clear message when they do that. Yeah, because um, the one that was drawn up for the for Hampton specific had a lot of grammatical errors in it, but I'm going to ignore that for the moment. Um, focusing on the one for to be enacted by the Senate and the House of Representatives. Um, I'm still, as I read this, not understanding that <coughs> that this will enable a town to dispense with an annual warrant article. How, and you need to get rid of the by on the bottom line. A town may vote to change between the purposes contained in this subsection. Um, if cemetery lots are sold, a town shall determine by vote of an annual or special town meeting that the funds received from such sales shall be deposited. Does, so does that mean by a single initial meeting that you will lock this in? Yes. That's how I would construe that? Yes. Okay. My other um, thought is that this doesn't tell me the time frame and I believe the trustees point was well taken and I share that once the deed is is set up once people apply for purchasing the property and the deed is signed and the check is submitted how can we guarantee that that check will immediately go without any lag without any holding without any once a year that that particular check for that particular transaction will go straight to the trustees of the trust fund so it can start earning interest. It says shall be deposited. So that that's the only place it can go. It cannot go in the general fund if you vote it. Right, so, so there's no holding checks or no, no it will go <coughs> right in. Okay. Um, no, I cur currently I think one dollar of every every lot sold over there goes into the general uh, well, actually, the general fund, all of it goes to the general fund right now. And what we do is uh, we don't separate out the dollar because we've been using that money all year. The phrase taxes the whole 2000 or whatever dollars. Um, at the end of the year, we simply add up all the sales of those lots and put that in the warrant article. We don't deduct anything from it. Okay. So, with, so this would be the mechanism having enhanced the state statute. Yes to protect us by means of one single warrant article right whenever we right. can do it um, to get this in here I even though you're optimistic about fitting into the existing cemetery uh, there is just X amount of land there once that's gone there's not going to be any more sale of lots in that area um, I would like to see that trust fund protected basically in perpetuity and have the interest and as you say the interest will go up the interest will go down. I mean someday it might be 20 percent who knows but uh, I would like to see that stay there permanently forever not to be touched as an ongoing trust fund except for annually being able to use the interest I was a little concerned when I read your minutes of June 26th because the last paragraph says the trustees voted unanimously not to support any attempt to do away with the cemetery burial trust fund, which is fine. Chairman Irwin suggested that we might buy the former Odyssey House School adjacent to the High Street Cemetery with the trust fund money and use it as a senior center. Mr. Harrington will look into the cost. Well, um, that, that, that's nice, exciting <laughs> minutes, except that, <laughs> it, well, but that's not the purpose of that fund in my mind and um, if this is kind of the second instance where I, I think nothing has probably happened here but we've had library trustees grabbing up the recreation director for their proposal with their combined library senior center and now this intimation 
I, I hope that we as a board are not allowing recreation to be tapped by any other entity unless it goes through us. But this is probably a thought, and I know all of us have thoughts. It was, it was a discussion that we had. If you could take that money. This, is, this was just a discussion. <coughs> yeah. Take the money that we have in yeah. that trust fund, buy that building, yeah. and then rent it to the town so the money would go back to the cemetery. But that's not what that fund is for. Yeah. Well, we would have to go to the town and ask if it could be yeah. done. That's not the purpose of the fund. Tom, Tom has an in there, if you guys are interested. The price on that building over there is... Serious. It's, it's actually very uh, affordable, and it's a very nice building over there. It so. needs a lot of work. Uh, a lot of work. So but anyway. Do we have a consensus then to move <laughs> forward on this first warrant? I think so. I think the, uh, the article referencing uh, adjusting the state statute so that Hampton, as well as any other town, can adopt this, I think we've agreed to that. this matter. Um, okay. Anything else? Or? Buy on there. I just, I just printed something out. I know that there was some questions about some of the oh, things with the cemetery, and I'm going to send this over. I don't know who okay. would Paul. Information on the cemetery would Paul be the one to? to it, it's something you. you well, it's like you pricing and regulations and that stuff that we'd like to have posted on there. And I figured I, I made a copy of it all. My, my suggestion is is send it to Christina. Yes. Christina. Okay. Yeah, basically, different. We're growing where different people have the capability to post um, stuff to the website. It all doesn't. Fall yeah, so down she could put it on there too. Yeah. I know I called. Um, uh, I, I emailed uh, the library, and they put some other information on right. that part of it too. So yep. you know, right now the the office, the building over there is you know, 99% complete. Um, we're hoping to get together with Paul, and we're going to have the uh, look about getting a computer set up with a. Uh, with all the uh, software and hardware that we need to do all the stuff that we have to do and you know we're going to try to get into the 21st or maybe 21st and a half century here you know <laughs> instead of like the 19th century that we've been working on over there so things are actually coming around very well over there so okay I just okay. have one thing if I could have one second and um, I wouldn't bring this up except Mr. Nichols said that I didn't answer his phone call and I took the information to Matt to everybody for the trustees to get that to him because he has called me a couple other times and he wants to get into things about the gate and I just wasn't comfortable calling him back so that's why I did not call back okay. but I did take it to the meeting and we put all the information together so I just didn't want the rest of you to think I wasn't calling people back if they called me I had a reason just don't go buying any buildings <laughs> okay <laughs> like a good idea. thank you very much thank, thank you, you. That's a good way to get to see you once in a while. Well, that's, that was kind of a salvo. <laughs> <laughs>